What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara. I'm Sharif, and as per usual, we're going to wait for everyone to migrate on over from the other stream and start populating the chat. Then we're going to do some shout-outs. Archie Manning Jr., let's go, yelling rum. Yes, rumble up big boy today. I'll have that on my watch list. We'll be talking about that quite soon. Crazy Stitch Lady, hola. Eddie R, big Eddie R, big Bob Dub. We got Vin as well, Patrick Langlois, Richard Fan, T-Money, Trader Forever. We got Starvin Like, I like that name. We got Pillsbury, not the Doughboy. We got Pillsbury. We got Bristol, Mr. Peanut, Rick Hawkins, Priyana. Yes, I see you, Paul Kennedy, Ponzi, Fonzi. We got, obviously, Bears versus Bulls because we, the world's greatest moderator and up candle. And I like how it's a, a yellow uh, logo there. I figured, you know, up candle be like a green logo. Yeah. From the green candle, it's an up candle. I, right? like, I guess you can't judge like a candle by its color. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I like that. But, you were um, just setting yourself up for that one, weren't you? Uh, how's but, it going? How's the weekend? Um, I, as I mentioned to you off camera, I mm. did sleep for about 20 hours this weekend. Ah. So we are, um, in a word, rested. You're good to go. Yeah, I didn't do uh -huh. too much other than, um, sleep and then recover from the sleeping, but excited to take on the markets. What about you? Uh, not bad, not bad. Um, believe it or not, Adara, I ate an entire cake. <laughs> I'd like yeah. more details. What kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah, a chocolate cake. Okay. Uh, stock, a chocolate sponge cake with a plethora of icing, chocolate icing. How was it? And I ate the entire thing on my own. It must have been like four or 5,000 calories. It had to have been. I'm feeling awfully plump today. And, uh, you know, I feel good about myself, but whatever. It's winter, and it is bulking season, baby. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some trades and enough about my binging on the weekend with chocolate cake. Let's get to this NVIDIA trade before we start talking about uh, the uh, lesson du jour. NVIDIA. Okay, so I ran up to the desk at Adara, and I said, Adara, what were we talking about on Friday for the lessons? Uh, I, we were talking about breakout trades. And what did we say about breakout trades? One of the key indicators we said looking for a fake out is if it takes the key level, a key resistance or support level, depending if it's a long or a short, prior to the 930 bell. And that is exactly what NVIDIA did this morning. It broke 600. In fact, it broke 600 yesterday night. Believe it or not, there is overnight trading on some platforms. And this was ticking over 600, it was at 601. So I said to myself today, be on the lookout for an NVIDIA fade off 600 today. And that is what we got, Adara. We got about $10 more, maybe $13 worth of range because we spiked up there at the opening print to about 603, 603 and a third. And we got a low print here. I got bottom wick so far on this, on this trade at 50, sorry, $590 and say two thirds, about 69 pennies, give or take. We got short here once it broke this trough. So I was waiting for a newer low to print on this Nvidia trade. We took 595 short and we were able to ride this bad boy down into about 590 and change 590, 90, 590, 95. And in that area, just a smidge below 591, but it is on its way up again. So strong is Nvidia that not even a fake breakout, a failed breakout can keep it down on the day. It is actually up, uh, albeit marginally, Adara, 0.06%, kind of putting in possible double bottom here. And I don't want to say double bottom just because I see two areas on the chart uh, similar to one another because the thing is we're still putting in lower highs on NVDA. So we popped up, like I said, through 603, and every subsequent high has been lower than the, the previous one. So I'm, you know, cautiously optimistic that maybe we get back up to 600, uh, maybe if there's a nice move up on the NQ or whatever, and then we're able to maybe reinstitute a short off that uh, whole, that $100 level. So we'll have to wait and see what NVIDIA gives us. But Today, already just one trade on NVDA here, and uh, we'll see what else we get. As you know, you saw the, the, the big kahunas on AMD this morning. AMD's almost down 5%, believe it or not, after one hell of a week last week. Yeah, AMD, um, you know, it, like as I was saying to you um, right before we got live here, it's having an AM day. Like, oh my God, this this move to the downside. At least this one's down in the day, right? But what, what makes, what I think is interesting is we're having a little bit of um, this kind of, 
looks like we might be making a bit more to move to the upside because I think this kind of hold of this 166 is kind of telling. Right, we have that move down to 166, and then we have a couple of candles that are just kind of taking up that 166. Now we're breaking above that 166. And I, honestly, I think the fact that this market seems to be at a moment of indecision is kind of making it hard for me to find trades to get involved in, right? Because I think with a lot of these, we have it where, like, I was just looking at Square because these payment names have been <laughs> absolutely blowing up here. And I think, uh, with like, something like this, it does look like we have a move to the upside. We're also up 3% on the day, right? So a lot of these. A lot of these names are like this, where there's these crazy moves up. We're up X percentage, insanely high. And then we also have kind of a downward trajectory. So it's really hard to know where to get involved, yeah. I think, is my take right now on the market. But congrats on that NVIDIA trade. That is... Um, oh, I thought you were going to congratulate me on my cake eating. Oh, I was going to... But I was, if you, I was did you enjoy the cake? About that. Oh, that's true. Yeah, be honest. But I it love how he feels like it. trolling me in the chat. He He's like, did, did Sharif just try to justify eating an entire cake on based on bulking. I was like, come on, Neil, let me just enjoy my life, man. As long uh, as it was a good cake, that's what matters, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Bruce from <laughs> Matilda Moment says Ram Ram. I don't even know what that is. Is that? It's a meme. Is it? It's like she for the teacher that. forces his kid to eat a chocolate cake. It's not a meme, she says what? It's a scene from the movie. But I feel like it's become a meme. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. But I know it was a scene <laughs> in the movie as well. <laughs> yeah, Neil's like, exactly. Just say it was for enjoyment, not bulking. Man, let me live. Let me live a little bit. But I'm going to have to Google that uh, Bruce from Matilda moment. Uh, find out. All right, guys. Let's get to work because we got some stuff on, uh, on the board today that we want to talk about. We're talking about candlestick patterns. We're going to be talking about that all week today. Today we are, sorry, all, all week this week we're going to be talking about candlestick patterns. Today we're going to be talking about six bullish candlestick patterns. Super easy. Some of them are going to be one, off, one candlestick patterns. Some of them are going to be two and three. We'll talk about the first one so far. That, this is the easiest one. You hear Adair and I talking about this candlestick pattern all the time. The hammer candle. What is this hammer candle you speak of? Let me just uh, bring it in real quick over here so that we can, uh, we can have a look at the hammer candle as I talk about it. So one second here. There we go. This is the hammer candle. All right. So the hammer candle candlestick pattern is formed of a short body with a long lower wick and it is typically found at the bottom of a downtrend. So you see obviously here you have a very, very simple uh, downtrend with lower highs and lower lows. Then you get this oddly looking candle with a really low wick and a, a flat top or like basically looking like a, like a hammer where the the pr price action closes at the absolute highest. It doesn't actually have to close uh, with no top wick. It can close with a little bit of a top wick like this one. But the point is for the body to be disproportionately small relative to the lower wick here. So that's what the characteristic of the hammer candle. And the hammer candle shows, although that there was selling pressure prior to it forming, ultimately strong buying pressure drove the price back up. And that's what we see here. That's what's reflected when we look at this one-off candle we know that we made a new low but look at this the buyers really overwhelm sellers and you hear Dara and I talking about this all the time where there's a tug of war between buyers and sellers and this typically is reflective of when buyers start to win over sellers this is the one-off candle that can kind of give you an indication that may be happening as with everything else in trading it is on the balance of the evidence there is not to be uh, too much put into one indicator, one candle, one chart pattern. You guys get it. It is a balance of the evidence approach. Okay. And the color of the actual hammer candle can vary, but green hammer candles specifically are more bullish than red hammer candles. Then because it can basically it can open up uh, here. It can open up here and close here. So this could end up being red as well. It could still be a hammer candle. It is more bullish, though, when the hammer candle ends up being green. So this is one that I often look for, um, especially when we have a strong stock on the day, which, uh, you know, suffered a pullback either 
either into the open or some point in the day, and I'm trying to get in long on the stock, but on a pullback. I'm not sure exactly where to get in. Maybe there's no price level that I like for that particular name, so I'm looking specifically at the price action rather than the level to see, you know, if is there a hammer candle that's going to form? Is there anything else specifically that looks bullish that could say to me, Sharif, maybe this is your time to punch in long. I'm a trend trader, so I'm typically going with the trend. It's got to be strong or weak on the day. I'm typically following that particular trend, but I don't like chasing stocks. I don't like punching in at highs. It's just not my modus operandi, so I'm always looking for a pullback on a strong name, and this is one of the things that I typically look for, something like this in the price action, Adara, to get, give me an indication. Maybe this is your time. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a really good point. And also, thank you so much to AJ for um, bringing up this really good example in the wild. Look at this Apple hammer candle. Beauty. Uh, oh, right that. at the end of a selling trend. Um, all of the factors that we need are here. Um, and then now we're making this move to the upside. So um, this is a, a great look. Uh, thank you so much, AJ, for that hammer candle in the wild. And yeah, um, if anyone sees anything exactly like this, um, just kind of like bring up the, the stock the time frame of the candle, like we'd love to take a look because we're always looking to to find examples in the wild. And I mean, look at this, like AJ called it. We have this candle nice call, and then we have this beautiful move uh, to the upside. So I think that's a, a really nice look on that. And that makes sense too, right? Like you want, you want kind of confirmation. I think this is one of the biggest things that, that you've taught me that I've really learned as well yeah. uh, with regards to that. If you see this wick to the downside, it shows that we do have, um, you know, the, the fact that buyers are overwhelming sellers. So I think that tug of war yeah. does eventually kind of won out at least yes. uh, periodically. So I think that's a really interesting look and that's definitely been a sign. Even sometimes if I'm in a long and I'm feeling a little bit discouraged, mm -hmm. if I see a movement like that, I'm like, you know what? No, there's still the tug of war is still happening. Sellers haven't won Absolutely. yet. So I think, I think it can be a good move to get into a trade, but it can also kind of help you um, see a reason to stay in a trade as well. Man. See like, hey, the trade's not over yet. Yes, so I think that's a good point. Absolutely agree there. Let me just pull in this one over here. Um, all right. I don't know why it's not letting me open up some of these pictures over here. Maybe I can just go like this. One second. Uh, yes, there we go. Super easy to do that. And then we can just double click, right? Oh, it's not giving me that opportunity. That's fine. I will figure it out. Let's bring in this uh, candle now. This is called the Inverse Hammer Adara. Okay, I'm just figuring out um, some of my animations over here. All right, the inverse, inverse hammer. Um, it's a similarly bullish pattern as the regular hammer candle. The only difference being that the upper wick is long rather than the lower wick being long, okay? So you have the body towards the bottom of the, uh, the candle with the upper wick being long. However, it still has to have some of the same characteristics. It has to be preceded by a prolonged downtrend. And typically what I take it on is a strong stock that's in a pullback. And I'm looking for the indication of when the pullback's gonna end looking for a hammer candle, an inverse hammer candle. Essentially what it's indicating is buying pressure followed by selling pressure that was not strong enough to drive the market price down. And that's what you can see here. So you know you already have a downtrend and then buying pressure started stepping up and that's evidenced by the higher high that it's made here relative to the previous candle. However, the buying pressure wasn't strong enough to push, it, to push up the closing print to the top side of the candle. However, it is followed by another green candle after that. So what you're looking for here is that it's, uh, you're looking for um, a suggestion essentially that buyers will soon have control of the price action and don't necessarily have control of it at the moment. So it's not as conclusive or as uh, decisive, I would say, as a regular hammer candle, but one to be on the lookout for, especially if it's uh, uh, followed by several green candles in a row. Um, of which one of them makes a newer high. Like you can see on this one, the subsequent uh, green candle doesn't make a new high. However, it is above the opening and the closing print of the, um, of the actual, the, the inverse hammer candle. So that's another one to be on the lookout for. And you know, typically what I would have thought initially, you know, if I just looked at this without studying it, is that this is kind of a bearish pattern because you feel like, you know, the price action pushed the, uh, or yeah, the buyers pushed the price action to a new high above the previous red candle, but it wasn't enough, so it pushed it right back down. You think that, that sellers would be in control, but not in control enough to print, uh, to print a, a newer low beyond the bottom wick there. So 
that is another one to be on the lookout for. So like a, like a hammer candle, an inverted ca a hammer candle um, has a long wick, but the long wick is to the high side, not the low side. It's indicating buying pressure by the buyers, but not enough to basically drive the price, or sorry, it's indicating selling pressure by the sellers, but not so much, uh, not enough essentially, to push it into the a newer low beyond the bottom wick. And essentially this inverse hammer candle is suggesting that buyers will soon have control of the price action, Adara. Yeah, no, I think that's a really interesting one. And I think that's one that I often get confused with because I'll see that sometimes then I'll go short thinking, oh, no, the sellers have, um, mm -hmm. have kind of overwhelmed the buyers, right? The buyers can't get up. We'll have this wick to the upside, but it still kind of closes a little bit uh, lower. So I guess I think that that's certainly kind of an interesting look to be contextualized in that mm -hmm. way. And I think something I'm going to be more cognizant of because it seems like if you do have the green candles following it, so maybe, maybe I guess then for myself what I would maybe wait for is you see this candle, we see that this is potential movement, then maybe wait for the next candle to see, do we have a green candle after that? Because that could be more buying. Yeah. If we have a, a, a red candle, maybe it's more selling. So I think that's certainly something to contextualize. And I'm not, I don't really like look at, at candle patterns as much truthfully, other than uh, those that, that kind of wick movement I like to look at. Right. So I really appreciate this uh, lesson there. Also, I just want to shout out Willis Addison, $2 Super Chat. Um, coin was that candle pattern from last week, 118 mm. textbook light bulb. I think you mean, I think this was uh, happened when the hammer candles the were hammer being discussed. Candle, yeah. Um, and yeah, this looks like, I think I found it in the hourly chart. We did have, um, with nice volume too, we had that hourly candle to the downside, 118. We had that wick to the downside, eaten right back up. Um, lots of sellers to the upside. So I don't know if this is what you were referring to. I think this was on the hourly. Um, but thank you very much uh, for that super chat there, Willis Addison. And I know you were doing really well with coin last week. So I think that was um, a strong look there. Yeah, no, I think, and I think too, I'm, I think all of these, these candle patterns are really interesting because I think it really does depend on context. That's the main thing I learned from taking my notes on yep. this as well, is it's interesting how both the hammer and inverse hammer can be, um, can be bullish, even though they are essentially kind of in opposite of each other, literally inverse by their name. It just really depends on the context of what these candles are present and if we had buying or selling before or after. Okay, I have no idea what the hell's going on here. Sorry, I'm just losing a lot of my setup. All right, let's get back to work. Bullish engulfing candle. Next one on the list here, guys. The bullish engulfing candle is formed with two candlesticks. The first candle, as you can see here, is a short red body that is completely engulfed by the subsequent larger green candle. And so what you're looking for here, the second candle opens lower then the first, so this is the opening uh, open for the candle, red candles, the open is the top of the body and the close is the low, uh, the green candle is the opposite of that, the open is the, the lower of the body and the close is the top. So the second candle opens lower than the first, however, the bullish market pushes the price up, culminating in an obvious win for buyers. So this is what we're looking for. Michael Noss talks about these bullish and get engulfing candles all the time. Typically, you know, when you see them engulfed, you see the, the wick engulfed as well here. The, wick, the wicks are, um, you know, they're on the same level. But the opening print for the, um, the subsequent candle is a lot lower than the opening print for the red candle. So it's engulfing the entire price action there. And that is typically a bullish pattern. It shows that even though we were preceded by a downtrend, uh, buyers now are in control, pushing this one obviously a lot higher. So keep your eye on these bullish engulfing candles. And I see people asking in the chat, what time frames do these work on? And you know, as we've been saying for a lot of uh, the either indicators, chart patterns, candlestick patterns, whatever we've been talking about typically in techn technical analysis, it is all fractal, meaning that it works on multiple time frames. However, one caveat I always need to drive home, the lower the time frame, so the one minute, the three minute, the five minute, the lower the time frame you go, the higher the probability is for failure of whatever you're using, the, the chart patterns, the indicator, the candlestick patterns, so they work, the, but the failure rate increases the lower you go on the time frame. So I just want to make that very clear. 
that is something you need to be cognizant of when we're talking about this kind of stuff. Obviously, if you see this on a weekly chart, it is obviously a lot more bullish or I would I don't want to say conclusive because nothing is conclusive in technical analysis, but it's a lot more persuasive that I should say than seeing it on the, the 15 or the 20 minute. I'm talking about the bullish bullish engulfing candle that we're looking at right here. So it is fractal. However, um, it does increase in its failure rate the lower down the time frame you go. So bullish engulfing candle preceded by a downtrend, and then the uh, it's a two candle pattern. One is red, one is green, and the opening price for the green candle is beyond the low of the previous candle, and then it engulfs the entire price subsequent to that. So hope that helps. Next on there is the piercing line pattern. Okay, this is one is an interesting one because this one I, I read about it in textbooks before, but I completely forgot about it and one that I don't typically use all that much. So the piercing line is also a two stick pattern. It's made up of a long red candle followed by a long green candle as it's indicated here in, in the picture. There is usually a significant gap down between the first candlestick's closing price. We know that the closing price is over here. Okay, and the green candlesticks opening. Look where this opens. So this is the closing price on the red day, and here's the opening price on the green day. There is a significant gap in between over here and over here. So that's one of the characteristics. Okay, it indicates strong buying pressure, however, as the price is pushed up to either above or at the mid price of the previous day. So what you need to do is you need to find the mid price for the previous day and look to see whether the subsequent day's closing price finishes, closes, not, not wicks, closes above the mid price of the previous day. So the, set, the close on the second bar must be more than halfway up the body of the first bar. Okay, and this is called a piercing line pattern. It is a two candlestick pattern. It is a bullish reversal pattern. Okay, and it should be obviously preceded by a big red day or a prolonged downtrend. So that's a, another one to put in uh, another arrow to put in your quiver there um, with respect to uh, candlestick pattern analysis, Adara. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a, I think that is an interesting one too. And I think a lot of these too, like with uh, we we're talking about chart patterns as well. It's really about uh, the context and also kind of measuring because something like this I think you'd have to kind of measure to see oh is it yeah. more than halfway up right so I yeah. think uh, I think that'd be interesting as well I also think it'd be interesting to kind of see the extent to which these patterns pay off in yes. different uh, time frames I love how you got into this trade so let, uh, g let's uh, give uh, everybody a breather and then let, tell us okay. about this NVD trade because I, I like that because we've been you and I have been talking about uh, this one uh, dancing at 600. Yeah, so I'm kind of nervous about this, I have to say. But so basically, uh, I'm staying in this. I have a tiny share size. So I'm staying in this until I see a decisive uh, move towards that 600. If we lunge at it with aggressiveness, I'm going to leave. I like how you lunged with your body. I did. That's fantastic. I did. Um, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I, I, I got in right at this 598.75. I was watching the book like a hawk. I noticed that level was pretty key. We were just kind of sitting there chilling. Nice. As I say that, we're running up towards 600. But I'm going to wait and see here. NVIDIA looked kind of double topish to me because look at all of this, this buildup and uh, grime we had, like all this consolidation around the 600, flushed below 600, came right back. We're knocking at the door. I'm going to be cautious here. Yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> knocking at the door with a vengeance. But see, we get to that 599.50 and then we come back down. Yes, so we're going to wait and see here. Like I said, I'm going to probably give this until that decisive 600 break or that decisive lunge towards 600. Uh, profit taking here, I would like to probably take it out. I, I decided around that VWAP area is of interest to me, that 597, not just because it's VWAP, but because that's usually, we're seeing these lower uh, lower highs generally, right? If we do make that decisive move to the downside. Of course, I am nervous. This is a bit riskier of a trade, but after looking at the book here, I like the look of this. We were talking about how that those pre-market level claims yes, can be less significant. Uh, especially if these breakouts, especially when it's something like 600 NVIDIA happening pre-market and then kind of fizzling uh, at open. Although that being said, NVIDIA has magical powers sometimes, so it can do <laughs> kind of what it wants. And as I yes. say that, we are getting close, but I thought, you know, sometimes you have to have the conviction to take a trade. I liked the book. I liked, initially I liked what we were doing at that level, uh, but we're 
we're going to have to wait and see what happens Fair. here. I think. Thank you okay. for letting me go over that. I appreciate that. Absolutely, yeah, because, I, you know, Jacob Wise kind of saying something similar to you. He's like, hey, Sharif, there was a great NVIDIA short setting up around 600. It looked very weak, kind of mad. Sean, uh, what? Sean? Uh, well, Sean's not going to take every single trade, brother. Like, uh, he's doing other things. Um, it just sh you didn't take the 600 in video. Um, all right, why brothers bring AMD back to 170, please? Absolutely, I am at your service. Uh, start punching in right now to bring Nvidia back. I mean AMD back up. I'm kidding, of course, guys. Uh, let's continue on with the lesson. Uh, the next um, chart pattern: Adara, the Morning Star. This one we hear about a lot. And I always call this by the wrong name. I call it the doji. Uh, well, it is kind of a doji, to be honest with you. There are different types of doji candles. And this one is uh, aptly named the morning star. So what is this morning star candlestick pattern? It is considered a sign of hope in a bleak market downtrend, or so the book says. It is essentially a three candlestick pattern. One is a short body candle between a long red and a long green. And so this is the short body candle, which is the Morningstar Doji. Preceding that is a long bodied red candle. And then subsequent to the short bodied Doji is gonna be a long bodied green candle. So we are looking for three candlesticks here to make up this particular pattern. Traditionally, the star will have no overlap with the longer bodies. I'm talking about this particular one over here. will have no overlap with its closing print and opening price relative to their closing print and opening price over here. Um, it signals that the selling pressure of the first candle, I'm talking about this one over here, the big red candle, is subsiding and the bullish trend is starting to come up on the horizon. And so even though we're only looking at three candles, I would say to you that, you know, if you're noticing this one subsequent to this a third candle having formed, you should be analyzing the candles subsequent to the third candle. See, is the bullish trend continuing? In this particular case, sure it is. Because after, you know, momentary kind of uh, uneventful day over here, you've got another big green candle rivaling the size of the first initial green candle. So even though we are only looking at three candlesticks here to analyze this pattern, I would say you need to look at the candles subsequent to that if you were if you are discovering it a little bit later on to see whether the trend is continuing to recover from that previous uh, prolonged downtrend. So again, to, to, to reiterate here, it is basically uh, a sign of hope. The, this morning star candle, three candlestick pattern is a sign of hope in a bleak market downtrend, and it should be followed by uh, you know some strength there indicating that as well. So that is the morning star candle. Any questions about that before we go on to the next one? Yeah, I was actually just going to say, so I, I do have, I, I guess I have kind of two points. So for what I actually was reading, there is a separate thing called the Morningstar Doji. And so that's because you were saying the Doji. There actually is one where it's apparently if oh. there's a Doji, it's like slightly less significant, but there is I a see. separate, it's a separate pattern. So I just thought, shout out to the Doji candle. Yeah, well, this yeah. one includes three. So I guess the Doji can kind of be on its yeah, own. Yeah, it can be that. like part yeah. of that, I guess, yeah. is what I was. Uh, and then the other one that I just think is interesting too, and I appreciate you pointing out, like yes, sometimes you want to wait for other candles. So it's like you see the first couple pieces of the pattern then you just sit there waiting like a hawk for the rest to come in. So I think that's worth noting as well, right? Like not Fair. getting involved too early because I think that's something it's, it's really easy to do. I do that all the time. You think you see a pattern and you get involved in it. It's like what we were talking about with like head and shoulders and these other patterns. Wait for that confirmation. Wait for that decisive break or that movement before getting involved because this, this could just be a little pause and then more downtrend, right? Yes, Not every pattern is yep. going to manifest in the same way. So I really appreciate you bringing it up. Absolutely. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have another candlestick pattern called the three white soldiers. I did not make up the name of this pattern, but it is what that's called. Okay. Three white soldiers. And essentially, it happens over three days. So as you probably guessed, it is a three candlestick pattern, much like uh, the morning star pattern. It consists of consecu uh, consecutive long green or white candles with small wicks. What is it, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> I don't make these up, Neil, I promise you. I'm not making these up. That's what they're called. Uh, it consists of three consecutive long green candles. Go. 
I, I, you know what? I actually deleted this, and I, I was gonna call them three green can, three, <laughs> <laughs> the three green candles. But then, you know, I'm like, nobody's gonna know what I'm talking about if they Google this later. It's not gonna show up. All right, so it's called um, the three white. And it has. Uh, small wicks on these consecutive green candles over here, which open and close progressively higher than the previous day. So you can see the opening print on this first candle is over here. And then each consecutive opening and closing print is higher than the previous candle. So you're looking for three of these bad boys over here. It's called the three white soldiers. Um, it is a very strong bullish signal that occurs typically after a downtrend. So what you are looking for here is a downtrend to precede these candles forming in, uh, in, in, uh, in succession. And it basically it shows a steady advance of buying pressure. That's what you're seeing there. And I'm sure there's plenty of different ones that we can pull up that have uh, this pattern on them, given how strong Adara the market has been since uh, the November to remember to began. Right. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure we could find this. umpteen amount of these bad boys here where the closing uh, print is above the previous days and the opening print is above the previous days. We'll look for that in the wild. But just want to show you these ones. Very simple candle, uh, very simple candlestick patterns today, guys. They are all bullish. Tomorrow we'll talk about the six negative ones. We'll go over these again um, as the uh, the day goes on, as the afternoon goes on. But I want to mention these patterns are fractal. They work on every time frame. However, their failure rate goes up. The, the lower the time frame you go, if you drop down from a four hour and go to a three minute, the failure rate will increase. And I don't have the, uh, the percentage that it's gonna uh, increase by with respect to its failure rate, but uh, that is what you should expect. You should expect a higher rate of failure uh, the lower the time frame you use these candlestick patterns on. John Del Segno, Sharif, advanced advanced block is a good one to mention here since it is three green candles, but their inside nature makes them a bearish indicator. I don't actually have that one set up, but thank you for pointing that out. Maybe we can include that. Tomorrow, when we talk about six bearish candlestick patterns, today, however, John, we are talking specifically about six bullish candlestick patterns, but thank you for pointing that out and letting people in the chat know. Uh, always dropping hot lines is John Del Segno. Big Kyle Burdett Tesla bear flag continuation to go with the other week's lesson plans. Let's bring in the side chart. We haven't done that today, Adara. And look at our friend, Stressla, Besla, Mesla, Besla. whatever Depressla. Adara is calling it on that particular day. It is not a good look, Adara. And we've been talking about the weakness in EVs, you and I, uh, Brendo and I, and the big kahunas as well have been talking about it for plenty of time. Um, as interest rates, uh, we, we keep hearing about interest rates being higher for longer, this, that, and the other. That obviously doesn't help these uh, electric vehicle companies, whether by way of finance rates, lease rates, input costs, etc. You, you know the whole spiel. Uh, this is a good-looking uh, bull flag, uh, Kyle. I like it. It's a V-shaped retracement, Christmas tree retracement, as our friend... Um, who's now on the ones and twos, baby, Randy. Handy Randy is on the ones and twos, and he's the one that coined this uh, this uh, pattern. He calls it the Christmas tree retracement, um, and it's because it's green and red, and it looks like a V, like upside down V, obviously, like a Christmas tree. And then, obviously, the sideways price action here, Kyle, gives us a bit of a range between support level one and pivot point. You've been watching the show, you know the red dotted line on my chart is support level one on pivots and then the green dotted line is the pivot itself. And it's been ranging in between 211 where the pivot is and that 209 level, $2 range here since around 1045 going about almost an hour uh, between this $1 range. We'll have to wait and see if Stressla can break down below 209. I've been saying this for a while. My friend Alfred is salivating, waiting for a possible 200 level to come in here on Tesla, Adara, as he will be looking to add. But I spoke to him on the weekend while I was eating my cake, and uh, he told me that he'll be adding only a little bit at the 200 because he's already got a big position. He's going to be waiting now for the bulk of the new addition to be at that 175, 180 level. Oh, so he's planning it out. Yeah, I'm like, where did you get that level? Did you do some technical analysis to figure we can get down there? He's like, no. 
it's based upon my uh, basically uh, my uh, what's it called cost basis and it only makes sense for me to add at those levels okay. so should and if they come in I'll be wetting my beak uh, around there but I'll only be wetting my beak very lightly around okay. 200 so discipline like the theme the name of the game is discipline yes. um, shout out to Alfred and I you know I Alfred. think we learned a lot about his value investing POV uh, when he what grazed us, so like I love that he, he did a couple. Came in his bespoke suit. Yeah, his his awesome suit. I love that he kind of came and and made a couple appearances there. So I did. really appreciate um, updates on this because I know you've been updating us yes, with these um, Tesla related, um, Alfred related moves for a while. <laughs> so much appreciated there. I do have to address yes. a couple super chats. Go for it. Uh, Willis Addison, thank you so much again for the two dollar super chat. Much appreciated. Like coin <laughs> pump on the 15 minute. Three white soldiers got puts 130. Uh, let's look at coin. Also, Nvidia just broke one uh, 600, so I'm gonna have to deal with that in a moment. Um, coin, yeah. There we go. Okay, uh, let's look at the 15 because you did mention the 15 minute. Also, yes, my Nvidia short's dying, so I'm gonna deal with that in a moment. Okay, yeah, I think. Um, okay. I'm not seeing the three white soldiers on coin on the 15 minute, but. Um, I guess maybe over here earlier, maybe uh, like in pre-market, but yeah, I think it's like a it's a nice look here on coin for the downside. I think we've had like one, two, three, four, five, six uh, red candles down. It's like like I said, a lot of these uh, that we're seeing right now, where we have um, this, we're up on the day, but we have this movement downward. So certainly, uh, and look for coin. Archie Manning Jr. 199 super chat. Uh, Rum and D Walk are the only real Trump related yeah. stocks. Here we go. Okay, yeah. let's talk about this, Adara. Let's do it. DWAC deserves some respect today. It's been deserving respect for a while. Um, whatever you think of the dude himself and whatever you think of the company itself, let's talk about the price action because the price action is running. Let's have a look over here, okay? Uh, we, we got multiple, high, uh, multiple days to the high side. Let's go uh, to the 15 so we can kind of uh, encapsulate this whole price movement, guys. Before, the, uh, before Donald Trump won the Iowa primary, we were basically hovering around 17 bucks for a while. Yeah, you know, give or take a couple of maybe, uh, you know, 30 pennies, 40 pennies to the high side, low side. We were at that $17 area for quite some time. Comes January 16th, we gap up. Best we could do that day is 23 bucks. Every single day has been higher highs and higher lows. Saving except maybe for the 18th comparing to the 17th. We had an inside day on the 18th relative to the 17th, but... On the 19th, we continued that uptrend breaking above uh, the 18th uh, high. And today we're really going here as, you know, we're, we're only speculating as to why, uh, but looks like as if we're, we're moving up here on uh, Ron DeSantis possibly dropping out of the race. We closed out 26 and a half on Friday. We've already touched 36 and three quarters on DWAC on the day. That is the high of the day right now, just a smidge below 37. You're gonna have to go an awfully long way back to find DWAC back at these levels. Let's do that now, because what is life without whimsy? Let's go have a look over here. Last time we were up here, guys, okay. Has to go all the way back to June 2022. So it's been a year and a half since we've been at these levels on DWAC. There's obviously um, an interesting bottom here. It's a consolidation bottom around this area. That takes us back to June 2022. The low there was, let's say, it's kind of a random area here. I'm going to go ahead and say this $45 area looks awfully interesting. Okay, I was going to say 40 because that's the level, the, the whole dollar level. We always, you know, I'm, I gravitate to these, these even dollar levels, whole dollar level, $10 levels. But uh, quite frankly, it looks like the price action based out around 45 bucks uh, oh, yeah. around over here. So that implies a nice little move from where we are at right now. Now, maybe we don't see it on the day, but uh, that's something to possibly look at on your chart, 45 bucks. Uh, let's go to the five-minute look now on DWAC, see how we could bamboozle a trade into this. Now, this 33 and a half is an interesting area. 33 and a half, 33 and three quarters. We had a top end, uh, a bit of a, I don't want to say a flat top, but we definitely had a resistance at that 33 and three quarters, maybe just a smidge below 34. That is until this candle around 1120 broke through. We had umpteen amount of touches at that level. 
So if we were to come back down, maybe into 34, 33 and three quarters, that would be an interesting long. But something tells me, you know, DWAC's going to be one of those ones where you're going to, you're going to, you may have to chase this one, which is not really my cup of tea, right? I don't want to be chasing DWAC, especially how it's trading right now. Let's go ahead and have a look at how the spread is looking on a DWAC. Apple coming right back down. I should probably mention possible 193 here. Uh, cup, a bit of a double top there at 194. Wasn't able to take 194 is Apple. So we'll have to wait and see whether this one continues to Huadunk after making highs there into 195 and a third. Let's have a look at DWAC though. Where is my screen? Yes, this is NVIDIA. We should take off Apple. DWAC, which is on the NASDAQ. What's the spread right now? So it's not, the 10 pennies, 9 pennies. It's not awfully bad. Um, and now having looked at it on the one-minute chart, there may actually be some support at 35. So look at this um, top end over here. Um, yeah, this big move up. Then we have a sideways consolidation that bases out below 35. So we'll have to wait and see there. Anyway, DWAC up 35%. I don't have a trade on it quite yet, but definitely going to keep an eye on it. Um, going into the rest of the afternoon. Some of the other small cap gappers that I'm watching, obviously Rumble, awfully strong on the day. The Canadian uh, you know, streaming, uh, video streaming platform, making a deal with Barstool Sports to have some of its videos uh, uh, streamed up on there as well. Closed out Friday at 360. Now the high of day is 464, so it's up over a buck. That takes it about 26 and three quarter percent on Rumble. BFRG, the, the gift that keeps on giving. This has been running for multiple days, as you can see here on BFRG. Multiple days last week and the week prior to that. Another local high here, $7.50 on BFRG. It's up 47%. It's trying to hold seven bucks as we speak right now. It's been putting in higher highs and higher lows, holding that seven period. Is that the 10 period, excuse me, the 10 period EMA, which is the green line on my chart, holding it awfully well. It like OB used to say last week, you know, it's like the, it's like a magnet pulling the price action back into the 10 period only to bounce off every time. So we'll have a look at BFRG. And the one that everybody's talking about, the one that was running uh, into triple digits today is SGMT, but it is since retraced now and is down about 4% since the bell multiple halter to the upside and to the downside of Dara as uh, this one broke through 20 bucks, got to $20.71 at its high and now it is at VWAP, below VWAP. This one I had, you know, I, I put an alert to take, uh, to take this long uh, through the break of the pre-market high, but this one didn't stop at all between pre-market action and after the bell. So it didn't work for me for... Uh, for that pre-market high break, SGMT rocket today up 111%, but giving back a little bit now. Yeah, SGMT is certainly um, an odd one. Like we were had that crazy move up, then we kind of were we hung out at one of those levels. Like I think that 140% to the upside for a while, and then we just kind of dipped lower. Also, this is the um, Nvidia trade. I am pretty happy with this. Just try to get out right now though around that 598.50 because. I was kind of noticing, I got out some of my profit here at that 598, and then when we kind of, we bounced right back up from that area, I just had the beak water set. This is, you gotta have the, the ducks ready to, to go to the right to the water, right? Cause you're gonna miss some of those uh, fills, unfortunately, otherwise. Uh, but right now I'm kind of noticing we're having a hard time getting back to that 598.50. I realize it's kind of a strange level, but like I said, with my, what I call scalculation, I really do like to look at the book and see what's shaking there. Also, um, so I, I also want to address, I did stay in this after we broke that 600. I was watching this. We got up to almost like 601, and then we flew back down with such a viciousness. Like, we, we I guess fl flew back down is kind of um, redundant there. We dropped back down there. So I noticed, like, clearly that 600 level was not holding. Um, and I think, Sharif, like, you know, you even mentioned this to me earlier today. You are like, look at NVIDIA. Look at how we took that 600 yeah. pre-market. And then it died, right? So I think that was a key level, and I think that's why I also stayed in after I saw that rejection again, because we did try to get 600 while I was in this trade and NVIDIA just couldn't hold it. So also, yeah, I am out of NVIDIA right now. Uh, thank you, Very appreciate short. that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I could have I could have stayed longer. I could have gotten more of the move, but right now I'm really just practicing being more comfortable in trade. So part of that was I did DCA, added a little bit at that 599 because I noticed we were still kind of going lower. Do you know what I mean? So I felt 
uh, emboldened to add to this position. This is also after we had that 600 failure. Yes. So I thought, you know, we really are failing. I'm going to add a little bit to this position. I think one of my new strategies now, I've been mentioning this for a little bit here, is I'm really trying to um, to start with really teeny position sizes. And then if I'm comfortable, I'm going to add a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Fair. That's what I did here. Really happy with this move. Um, and I, yeah, just, just kind of practicing getting more comfortable, dipping my toe into these trades, getting beak wetters. And that will be... Uh, the goal here, that's really thats really what we're trying to do, uh, learning a little bit each day. So that was my, that's been my big trade so far today. When I say big, I mean my only trade so far today. It wasn't even <laughs> that big, but I'm going to keep watching NVIDIA to see what we do here. I would, I'd be tempted to go either direction if we do see a little bit of support at that 598, because I have to say that bounce off that 598 uh, both times has been pretty significant, but also I'm kind of scared of NVIDIA around that 600 because we've seen what NVIDIA does around 600 oh, yeah. and that is nothing. That is nothing. That's what it does around 600. So I'm going to, to watch into this. Um, M. Allen. Okay, this I like this question from M. Allen. It gives me a lot to think about here. Um, actual question. Why hold so high into the trade against you but sell so quick? If you're right, wouldn't you want to hold for longer? I think that's a really good question. I think, honestly, as I'm learning, that's something I'm going to have to ask myself. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. I think the reason I did hold it against me was, A, because I like I had a really small position size going into this. Do you know what I mean? I did prepare myself for the fact that we'd probably – get to that 600 or test that 600. I also want to point out as well, one of my biggest uh, issues with some of these mag seven trades, especially as someone who does enjoy trading these mag seven and is trying to get more comfortable trading them, is a lot of times you have to give yourself a wider amount of risk. That's one of the biggest things I've noticed, right? Wow. So, and I think, you know, I was, right as I was about to get out of that NVIDIA at 600, I turned around and then we're back to 599. Do you know what I mean? So I think part of it, too, was the stock was reacting so quickly. I didn't really have time to get out. I probably should have set a stop for this. I did not. But I think part of that, too, that's why I kind of held it, the extent to it was. Also, as I said, too, and take this how you will, but this has at least been like how I've been trying to, to trade. I like looking at what the book's doing, too, and how it holds certain prices as my, as I guess, kind of part of one of my indicators, right, for myself. So I noticed that we... Every time we got near 600, it would kind of curl back down. So, or I guess climb back down. So noticing that, that was part of my indicator. I really do appreciate you asking that question. I think it's a really valid question. And I think it's something that definitely was very risky. And I, I want to acknowledge that. And I, I really appreciate you holding me to task for that. Because it is something I do want to learn and get, and get better at. But that was my approach to that NVIDIA uh, moment. And I think, yeah, the thing is, too, is I, it was a really small position size just kind of start. That's why I added more after once we had that 600 break. But I do understand it, it was a riskier move to take. And I think it's something I, I would like to reflect on a little bit more. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, keeping my eye on the future, we are below 17.5 right now. Uh, let's see. We're doing the wick dance, but we're doing it from the south side. So uh, that typically means a little bit of bearishness here. This is what I'm talking about. We we give up the ghost on 17.5 early on, and now we've been hovering below 17.5. For the like, I don't want to say the majority of the morning, but uh, a great a great part of the morning. It also happens to be below VWAP uh, if you are to start uh, the price action at 9:30. Okay, uh, this excludes all the pre-market um, price action. This one just has from 9:30 onwards. I have two NQ charts, one that excludes and one that includes. Now VWAP, if you would exclude the pre-market pre price action at 17.506, and we are below 17.5 right now, straddling it from the downside. So we'll see if we're able to reclaim that level. Looking a little bit bearish right now is the NQ, I gotta tell you, uh, below that 17.5. Now, the other uh, small cap gappers that we didn't talk too much about, RVSN, I had um, an alert for this one to uh, to trigger if it was to come and break through that three dollars and a quarter level that it put in the pre-market around 740. It's above VWAP right now, but it hasn't broken through the pre-market high. I'm talking about RVSN up 68 some odd percent today, but it is not through uh, its pre-market high, so it does not make it tradable in my books. The other one, Fisker. This one lost its $1 status, I think, last week or sometime like that. Now it's reclaimed a dollar, now below a dollar again. It's up 22%, 21 and three quarter percent. Got to that $1.11 uh, this morning, now at 96 pennies. Uh, EVs were strong uh, after the bell. Even some of the Chinese EVs started to curl up, only obviously as typically you know the Chinese EVs do. They trade better in the pre, and then after the bell, they seem to sell off a little bit. So 
keeping my eye on Fisker. But DWAC just made new highs of day. There goes 37 now on DWAC, over 41%. 37.20 now, HOD on DWAC, holding that 10-period moving average like a glove. This one headed to the high side, and maybe we're going to have to really start participating in this one because it's giving you ample opportunity. This one-minute, sorry, this one five-minute candle here has over $2 worth of range on it. So, uh, you know, say what you want about the spread on DWAC. It is continuing to give give you opportunities to the high side. So is Rumble, though. Rumble's awfully close to high day as well. 4.58, if we can show the chart. 4.59 now on Rumble. The high day is 4.64. So a lot of small cappers uh, to talk about as well. So as well with the futures as we are below 17.5. So keeping my eye on, uh, on these ones. Don't want to jump into anything uh, quite yet. Let's have a look at some of the, the large caps because they had a great uh, they they had a great morning. Now they're giving back. It looks like as if uh, the majority of their gains. Uh, a lot of them are still green on the day. Some red. Let's talk a little bit about these meta. Uh, yeah, it couldn't get through that 390. 390, 35 is as good as it could do. It's tanked six bucks since that time now. Below at 384 here, trying to get above 385, putting in a higher low, but still below view up on META. I don't have a trade on that. Amazon as well, down marginally 0.16%, a bit of a flat top, trying to do a dip, bit of a dance with VWAP and that 155 level right now on AMZN. Nothing for me on that one as well. Yeah, it looks as, you know, there's a lot of divergence in these charts today. Like, there's not a lot of similarity between uh, these MAG7 names and their charts. You know, often they look similar. Uh, their charts look similar. Maybe the price action uh, diverges a little bit. This one's up 3%. This one's up 1%. But the chart patterns, uh, they always have a bit of a similar twist to them. Not so today. Not so today. A lot of divergence in the... The price patterns on uh, these um, these Meg Seven names. So I'm gonna stay put. I don't really have to get into anything at the moment and uh, see what uh, what presents itself. The only trade that I've had so far is this Nvidia trade where we took this 595. The Castina man is talking about TSLA, and as I look, I'm, I'm seeing he's probably he's a dollar in the money now on this one. Obviously, it got into 208.59. It's breaking through 210 now. So Tesla. Finding some, do we have Tesla up on the chart? No, we don't. Tesla finding some support right now. We were just talking about, you know, some of these Meg 7 names being a little anemic here, but Tesla trying to possibly break through that 211 high. That's where it uh, tro uh, crested out. We've been talking about Tesla having a bit of a $1 range between 211, $2 range, excuse me, between 211 and 209. Uh, let's see if it can get above that 211. I know the Katina Man will be up a dollar more if it gets into that level. Let's see what we get on Tesla. Yeah, I'm going to have to give it a rest, La. I did briefly try to short this one at 210, and I before, I know that sounds, I also felt crazy doing it. I took a teeny tiny position here. Basically, I was watching the book, and I was watching us continuously fail that 210. We get to 210, we drop below 210. We get, we climb a little bit above 210, fall right back below, right? So I was like, we're going to take this short here. Of course, the second I get into it, Tesla's like, actually, I like 210. Uh, runs up from 210. Lost about 30 pennies here, 30 paper pennies, because this is a paper trade. I am still um, yeah, learning here, but so I think I am going to let this name uh, breathe. We are going to give this one a wrestler. Also, thank you very much to Diamond Realty of Miami. Diamond. 305 to my city. Shout out to Drake there. Um, saying not, NVIDIA broke at 598. So that was, like I said, for me, an interesting level here. So we broke, we, we did break that 598. We kind of bounced right back off, right? So that 598, that's why I took one of the beak winners here because I did, I do like these whole dollar levels. Sometimes we're profit takers. Uh, I know you were mentioning this as well with VWAC and the whole dollar levels. So I think that's certainly inter interesting time here. So you are, you did call it there, uh, Diamond Realty of Miami. We did reclaim that 598. So I'm just still going to still be a little bit patient for NVIDIA. We're still making lower highs. So this could be uh, another short. And again, congrats to Sheree for that fabulous NVIDIA short earlier. 
I think that this could continue to be um, a short here, but I don't want to get involved until I have a little bit more confluence. Shout out to Obi. I just want to kind of wait and see more, more lower highs, and I would like to see a decisive break, possibly a candle close, because we're talking about candlesticks. And I think one of the things, too, that I've learned since being in the midday is it doesn't matter as much what we do during the wicks. It really matters sometimes where we close. We're talking mm -hmm. about that with patterns as well, right? So I think a candle close below that 598 would be a little bit more bearish for me. So I'm going to kind of wait and see what we do here. I do not want to jump into a position with both feet. Also, um, Juan Padilla saying over $2 in the money on Tesla. Congratulations to you. Uh, you are, you know, Sean also in the money with Tesla. So uh, fabulous times here. The market's giving lots of opportunities. It's just really about taking them the right way, at least for myself. And also uh, NVIDIA trying to break below that 598 again. We're going to have to see what happens here. But yeah, I think definitely just going to rest on Tesla for now, not push myself on that one. Also, Amazon, not a name I trade too, too much. But I think we, we're seeing, I like kind of, I just wanted, I saw this on my side chart and I wanted to point out this level. I like this kind of consolidation. I don't know if it's the right word, but we're seeing some something of significance around this uh, 148, or 154.80. So we had that kind of jump around here for a bit, that 154.80, 155. Then we uh, violently swooped to the downside from there, come right back up to around that 155. We're chopping and turning again. So I think that could be an interesting level, sort of a base here around that 140, uh, 154.80. I think this is going to be maybe a bit of a reverse Christmas tree retracement to the upside. I don't want to jump on that. I just saw this level and, and thought it was something that I wanted to point out. But for now, in terms of trades, another name you might have on watch, because this is on my side chart left over from last week, um, the House of Mouse, Disney. Um, <laughs> I, I think this, this top is kind of interesting. I want to see what we do from this 94, 34. I was trying to get involved in this at 94, and I just could not get... Um, my foot into the door. Unfortunately, I was banned from entering Disney World <laughs> at this juncture, but I do like that 94 level. Look at all this consolidation we had at 94, and then that beautiful move to the upside. We had this again earlier today as well, so I think that 93, 9, 94 area, definitely key for Disney. I'm just going to keep my eye on it, so it's just another trade I have my eye on as well. But again, anyone seeing anything interesting with candlesticks, uh, let us know. Anyone's, Roger's saying we're sleeping on crypto miners, so let's look at Go those. For it. Um, because, yeah, you're, I mean, that's a very fair point. We haven't really looked at these guys much today. Uh, ooh, okay, hi, Mara. Uh, I think that this, I don't want to assume flat bottom break because we are up on the day, so that's already an element that we're kind of missing here. But I think this pseudo bottom around this 16.3 16, is kind of interesting with these lower highs. So uh, just shy of 17, then we get another one, 16.70. Uh, and then we go to the 16.5, right? So these lower highs are interesting in Mara. Mara is a name that kind of freaks me out. I've been involved in this a couple of oh, times yeah. and it does not care about your feelings even more so than the market. <laughs> so I'm going to be a little bit careful. But yeah, Mara, and then let's look at, because I know I know we are always looking at Mara. Let's look at Hut as well, because it's a name we don't give as much love to. Okay, uh, Hut, yeah, Hut a little less interesting, I think just in terms, but I think that the consolidation around that, we have this pre-market, uh, 675, then we come back to 675. I think this is certainly an interesting area for Hut. See what we do here. I know on the daily, we had that short report coming on January 18th with that beautifully named headline. I was reading that about the cabal and all of that stuff, um, the, the stuff on Hut, oh, the, the way they named that short that. report. Oh. I'm going to read the name of that again because I really I enjoyed that. Uh, so this is on Thursday, yeah, um, from J Capital Research. The coming Hut hump and dump, management hiding stock ownership through undisclosed related party, a stock promoter, cabal, and a host of left for dead assets. Ooh. So yeah, I mean, I think Hut definitely still recovering uh, from that because that was a giant move down from nine to seven dollars a uh, $2 move for Hut, uh, which is like about a, a, a under $10 name, so it's pretty significant. But I do think this uh, consolidation around 675 interesting on the day. So yeah, there we go. Amazing. I just tried to get a short on the future below 17.5. I mean, it looks a little bit too strong for me or not setting up uh, particularly well right now. It just touched VWAP, so I may be interested in taking this south again if we give up on 17.5 right now. But maybe right now is not the time to get in as it's breaking above 17.5 uh, quite nicely, but below VWAP still. So that's kind of the only thing that's really keeping me, uh, you know, possibly still interested in getting into this trade, but took an L right now on the future as we try to get short at 17.5. But 
interesting um, interesting conversation here in the chat about Mara broke my heart. Mara stole my New Year's resolution. <laughs> I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, Mara has been a tough one as of late because, well, if you've been looking for this one to continue to run, it really hasn't given you that opportunity, um, you know, especially since announcing uh, the spot Bitcoin ETF. It has been retracing um, since that time. You remember, you'll recall Michael Moss got into this one uh, a while ago for a swing trade, getting in the, the I think, the mid single digits and then riding it into that $20 area. It was you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen with this, uh, with the crypto names in general. We weren't sure if it was going to be a sell the news event once the spot ETF was announced. Now we know exactly what it was. It was a sell the news event, but what we're looking from a, a short term picture here. When we look at that retracement back into 40,000 on BTC, because, you know, we don't really know what February, March, April is going to bring once we get closer to that halving event and once the market digests the ETF. And we don't know how much money is going to flow into these sovereign wealth funds, these, uh, you know, these hedge funds, these pension funds, because now, you know, being an ETF form, uh, it makes it a lot more attractive to institutional investors. So I don't think we've seen the end of uh, the, the bull run on Bitcoin. Um, I think we probably see a little bit more of that. And, you know, obviously the, the, other, the other side to that is ETH, right? Now we're all waiting for a spot ETH ETF possibly. And so that may run up. It was running up after Bitcoin. If you remember a couple of days uh, after this spot ETF for BTC was approved, ETH started running. Uh, now it's down decidedly today. ETH is down four and a quarter percent. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what we get with uh, these uh, mining names, these exchange names, these, all these cryptocurrency related names. But. Um, I do believe that Neil is ready for the real deal. So yeah. uh, we're going to send it over to the real deal with Neil. Let's do it. Yeah, we will see you after the real deal with Neil. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it started. We got the real deal today. And I want to talk about something that can be a bit of a trap because candlestick patterns, people talk about them. You guys are learning about them every single day when you're following along with trades, especially today. And a lot of times, you can look at that lower time frame, your one, three, five minute chart, and it can give you that signal, but it is a trap because the higher time frame is telling you something different. I want to point out uh, this on AMD today. Now, first things first, what do I mean by a reversal candle? Well, I think we all have a general understanding. Reversal candle means stock looks like it's going to go one way and then goes the other. So at the open, if you have, I'll, I'll zoom right here. You can see this right at the open. This is an example of a reversal candle, this little red one in here. You're going to have a break of the previous high, and then it's going to fail immediately. You get that long wick, and then the body underneath. So it's rejecting the higher prices and then falling down. Pretty standard. Happens at the open, the stock falls to the downside. That's what we all like to see. Now, when a stock is falling all over itself like this in AMD, you're thinking it's weak. No questions asked. It's you're looking for places to join. And I think what ends up happening when you look at these candlestick patterns sometimes is you can just get lost in the sauce and any signal, single, any single signal to make you or give you an indication to join or to be a part of the trade, you're going to start overreacting to them. And, and I'm going to show you why I went long in what looked like a reversal candle to the downside. So first setting up uh, what the trend of the downside is pretty clear here on AMD. You can see it make a bottom, a double bottom at 164. Then you try to break what was this range here. You've got your bottom at the 64 level. You've got this loose top right here at about 166. There's your bounce. There is your break. There is your reversal candle to the downside. That's a bearish candle, right? No questions asked. The same thing we saw at the open. It breaks 166, immediately rejects it, and then looks like it's resuming its downward trend for the rest of the day. So why the heck would I be going long in this, and why is it back at VWAP right now? Well, uh, this, is, this is where sometimes you have to think like the counterparties of the trade, right? Overall, this stock has been in a great downward trend. It is hanging out at the bottom. It's past the opening range. You're getting into lunchtime. That is an at 11 o'clock, that is a time that you see reversals, often happens over and over again. 
one of the best situations for a reversal trade is when you track people long at the top or short at the bottom. So first things first, it's giving a short entry into a bigger move to the downside. Now I want to go to a higher time frame chart because that's a three minute. I told you part of the issue here is when you just get wrapped up at looking at the shorter range chart, that might look like a continuation short at the bottom. When I pull this chart out to a 15 minute, now what do you see at the bottom? Oh, wait a minute, I've got a stock which in a, in a strong upward trend and look at this, so it reversed to the downside, look at what happened at that 164 going back to previous week. Oh, we pull back, closed, gapped it, support at 164 and look at the gigantic move. So all you've done is retrace the previous day's range and double bottomed at it. When looking at the higher time range chart, Anyone looking at the bigger picture is thinking, that looks like a pretty big support level to me. Let's look for some longs. And what better way to initiate longs than to find a trap short setup on the lower time frame chart. So when we, when we say things like, when in doubt, zoom out, make sure you're paying attention to the big and key price levels. I'm not saying you gotta be long at the 164 bottom, double bottom. Sure you could be, it's a support level. But what happens here is shorts trapped right underneath 166, just as the stock has made a defined bottom. And the second it breaks back to the upside, well, they're stopping out above that line. You get some alpha there, and then you've got to move into VWAP. You get a long consolidation, and Bob is your uncle. There's nothing wrong with candlestick patterns. I think they're absolutely uh, vital and useful, certainly, as a trader. But remember that a lot of these patterns that you see and you're going to go over on a, on a daily basis or uh, whatever it might be, they're going to be on the higher time frame. Generally, you're starting with things like the daily chart or weekly charts, sometimes even monthly charts, then breaking down lower and lower. Remember, there is more bamboozlement when you look at the lower time frame, your one minute, your three minute, where the algos can really trip you up than you're going to have on the daily chart on the 15 minute chart. So you have to watch out for the traps that are on that lower time frame chart and try and stick to what is good. Make sure you're observing the key levels, keeping an idea of the bigger picture so that you don't get caught in that trap. And before, I don't wanna wrap things up without talking about something that can go in the other direction for me right here. Like if you look at Funware today, it's just trend up. And when we're talking about traps and this and that and all that good stuff, there's another perfect example here with Funware. The amount of times this did a reversal candle to the downside, or what looked like a reversal candle only to continue up, is, it, it's almost ridiculous here because it's throwing, it's throwing all kinds of shade on the way up. Reversal candle, perfect dip buy. If you're long into it like I was, could have been a hold. Could have been a re-entry point. Reversal candle again, and then you're gonna see it hold one more time. Like this is throwing wick tops into the uptrend, okay. essentially running stops, and then that's the time you want to get in. But when you zoom out, you see it's been a strong trending stock since making a huge bottom. That is wow. the key. It's always a different idea when you're looking at it in the other time frame. That higher time frame is going to be key. A lot of times rinsing people out is the perfect chance to get back into that trade to the long side. When are people panicking? And when can you use that to your advantage? If they're looking at that low time frame and you can keep your eye on the big picture, which, hey, did an AMD, but I'll admit it, didn't necessarily do it there uh, in Funware. You've got to be able to learn from those types of trades so you can up your game and start not falling for the traps, but then observe when others are trapped and then get back into it uh, to the upside. So I'm gonna send you right back in. That's the real deal. Avoid those time, those traps when it comes to the one, three, and five minute, um, and you're looking at those candlestick patterns. When in doubt, zoom out. Can't go wrong. The Neil the like dropping the facts. Thank you very much, Neil. The real deal with Neil as insightful and as awesome as always. While Neil, while Neil was dropping hot lines, the market also decided it would drop some hot lines. No, really, though, it started dropping and started dropping big. And there we were trying to do that dance with no pants with 17.5. Uh, and then we got stopped out. Well, we, we got revenge on this bad boy because we took this 17.5 uh, again south. And here we go. 
all the way back down into the 17 4 6 as we went. Got a little bit of a reprieve there at 4 6 3, Adara, and uh, bounced a little bit back up. We're still holding uh, a little piece here as we are down on this market now, but 30, uh, almost 40 points in the money here as we come right back down. Look, guys, the low of day is exactly yet a Friday's closing print. Or it's not Friday's closing, it's the overnight high. Excuse me. 17,438 is the low. And that we got a double bottom off the low this morning at 1045 and again at 11 o'clock. All those ones were, uh, that, that level was bought up. So if we can continue to maybe come back into that 50 point level, that would be a great out for this short that I have here right now on the future. Here we go back into the mid 60s, we go Adara, but I'm gonna be looking for something maybe in the mid 50s, maybe for a higher low so that we don't touch 17,438 again, uh, but we get somewhere in that 50 pointish area. I'm talking about the uh, MNQ here on the Fuge. Uh, nice move down. Say, say that again. D the Katina man is telling me that DWAC is at $40. And uh, wow, dude, it went to 41. DWAC is an absolute rocket on the day. It is now number one on my scanner. Uh, four um, percentage up since the bell. It is up 40%. Since 9.30, it knocked on the door, 41, Adara. It is up 55% on the day. DWAC knows no bounds today as uh, the, um, the Trump man looks to, to win tomorrow in New Hampshire. Yeah, speaking of which, sorry, I, I did Before, not get to read the super uh, chat earlier. Apologies, uh, and thank you very much to American Truther for that 4.99 super chat. Trump and Truth Social get cloud services and streaming support from Rum. Uh, Rumble also had record user growth and interaction rates in December. Little uh, nerd face emoji, the little smiley. So yeah, I think like that's a really, uh, I don't know that the emoji with the glasses. So yeah, thank I think you this very is, uh, much for that. Thank you very much for the super chat. Sorry, I did not get to read that earlier. We got um, the move over to the real deal with Neil, and it, I got swept up and I missed that so I do apologize I thank you very much always for the support yeah I think um D walk has certainly um it, it's been it's been crazy it's I nothing yeah. else to say this is a crazy move um to the congrats to Gerald Fitz who seems to be involved in this saying he's holding until 60 <laughs> um so best of luck to you there congratulations for that I want to um, read something out of Derek please do. funny James Dell one of the OGs in the chat one of the funny guys uh always dropping hot lines I like this one Prescott welcoming Stroud, Love, Mayfield, and Allen to the fishing boat. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And uh, if you know Dak, you know he likes to fish. Uh, he usually takes uh, the O-line there. He takes the uh, offensive line in his boat to thank him for, uh, you know, protecting him all, all season. And uh, while maybe this time it won't be the O-line, it'll be fellow quarterbacks who have bowed out gracefully we didn't talk any football today I'm gonna you know obviously I, I gotta tell you both uh both of my uh the, the the main kahuna the big kahunas both their teams did way better than Dallas did against Green Bay Green Bay was leading for the majority of the game I personally thought Green Bay was gonna win I think they pulled uh you know cat out of the bag there last minute I personally also thought uh, the Bills were going to win. I thought they were going to at least tie it with that field goal. But, uh, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough. It sucks being a sports fan because you put so much uh, – I, I put so much emotional energy behind it, and when you end up losing, it's just – it's so detracting. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, let's get to the uh, to the trade that I'm in right now, Adara. As we are basing out at 17.470 here, finding some support uh, for uh, on the future. If this comes back into 17.5, I'm just going to cut it. I'm already profitable on uh, on the trade, but I am looking for a continuation down. I probably will be wetting my uh, my beak there at the 17,450-ish area if it is to make its way down there. Otherwise, if it comes back into 17,5, I'm going to end this trade and, uh, you know, wait to see what it does around 17,5. Does it reclaim 17,5 or are we going to reject again? If we reject again, great. I'll just get short again. I don't care. But uh, I don't want to lose. I don't want any part of this trade to go against me. So I'm going to be watching quite intently there on the future. Now, DWAC is the one that we really need to keep an eye on. It did reject 41, uh, several touches into 41. Now we're coming into 39. 
is this a buying opportunity here on DWAC or are we retracing the move? So we definitely got some support at 38 and a half over here. Uh, a lot of wicks into 38 and a half, all of which got bought up. This is the one that I'm staring at the most. So this can, this one minute candle over here, a bit of a, a tail into 38 and a half, all of which got bought up. The closing print there on this particular candle got off that 38 and a half low into 39 and a quarter. So we'll wait to see if DWAC can start curling up here. But I got to tell you, I don't think I have the stomach today for DWAC. And it's just, it's spready, it's wild, it's... We'll, we'll wait and see what we get here. We obviously broke through that whole that $10 level at 40 into 41s, but not on a closing basis. So we'll pack our patience there. NVIDIA finding some support. Uh, Adara off that 596 coming into 598. We'll wait there to see if there's another recycled short that we can get at 600. The, the pops into 600 have all been successful shorts. Yeah, probably had to pack your patience a little bit on this particular pop because this one took you into about 60, uh, sorry, $600.60. Oh, yeah. But then, you you know, it quadunked right back down below 596. So we'll have to wait and see whether, you know, the recycled trade at 600 uh, presents itself again on NVIDIA. But the Fuge now into the 80s, going to have to watch this one as we should probably restart the lesson as uh, it is 1215. Guys, are we able to put up the, uh, the <laughs> it's Randy on the ones and twos, but Ram Ram's next to him. So hopefully we'll get the, the uh, topics back up there and we'll go uh, round two into, um, into the lessons. We'll just wait for that to come back up. Anything you're watching though, there while I do that. Yeah, I am. Um, I did. I did. Um, I was allowed entrance into Disney World. We are in DIS. This is a short, um, and I know this is you know potentially kind of sketchy. I am a little bit nervous about it, but I'm basically trying to take the part of this position to around that um, where we kind of had like that move back up earlier, so that 94, 14, 94, 15 area. That's where I have the first beak wetter set and ready to go. And then I'd like to take the rest out just before that 94 area because I like to get out right before we kind of hit these key levels on shorts uh, and then on, you know, on longs as well, right? Just because you, you don't always know if they're going to hit these even dollar levels. Also, worth noting, the other thing in terms of like, if we get above it, I am leading. If we make a higher high, I'm saying au revoir. I will say goodbye to Disney. I will take my photo uh, with Mickey Mouse and I will leave this, this trade post haste. So that is my, that's my take now. Um, and yeah, thank you Diamond Realty uh, of Miami for mentioning uh, this man. level. I've been really interested in NVIDIA. I've been talking about this level all day, this 598 on NVIDIA. Because this was, I was, I was one of the people who, as you mentioned, you had mm -hmm. to kind of pack your patience on that short as we hit above 600. That was, you know, a big, a big moment of patience. Uh, I tried to learn a lesson there by staying in and that, but it was a stressful moment indeed. But yeah, look, like we kind of w went all the way back down to 595. I was watching this with bated breath over here while the real <laughs> deal with Neil was, um, was spit and fire here. And then kind of getting, um, you know, getting involved here, uh, kind of watching to see what we do with this 598 because I think 598, I, I totally agree with Diamond Realty of Miami. It's been kind of uh, diff definitely an interesting moment here with regards to 598. When we broke below that, we can, kind of came right back up. We had a hard time breaking below that in the first place. Now we're coming back to 598. Long story short, keeping an eye on it. Also, yeah, so I do agree. I want to address because some people are saying, oh, like you're short Disney. The sticky note says long Disney. I agree that Disney's long. We're up on the day. I'm just shorting this till we get to that like 94, 15. Do you know what I mean? I'm just trying to take scalpulating, right? And I, I have acknowledged this is, you know, if, or I guess I have, but I, I, in my brain, acknowledge I think this is like a, a riskier move. And so I do have it really tight on this. If we make a higher high above that 94.3 area, I'm going to have to exit. But I would be planning on getting long if we get back to these like night early 94 areas. I just want to also see if I can take some of it short on the way back down. So I just want to address that. I do think long Disney is um, is the better look the longer term. I like this uh, chat, this uh, dialogue going on in the chat. Lethar lethargic's like. Uh, uh, Adara is short, and then uh, Jay Lee responds like, "No, I think she's quite tall." And, yeah. and I, as someone who's standing next to me or sitting next to me, I should say, uh, Adara is quite tall. Uh, I gotta tell you the truth. So uh, Adara is a tall person. Uh, for anybody who's wondering and who hasn't, uh, yeah, who doesn't know, Adara's tall. Um, <laughs> I like you settling that yeah. debate there. Yeah, yeah, that. that's it. That's the end of that. There we go. Um, you guys should just take my word on that. Um, how tall? How tall are you, Adara? I'm like five, um, 
I, I'm around 5'8". That's I what believe I say, is the, yeah. is the But is with the shoes, you're quite a bit taller. With heels, I'm yeah. like, we can get close to six feet depending yeah. on what I, the heel Because I'm sometimes is. eye to eye with you, and I'm like, okay, well, she's pretty tall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was obvious, says Isa Moro. I'm sorry. I didn't know that you were the tall detector <laughs> there in the chat. All right. Um, all right, guys. Now, we're still holding this MNQ short, but we're going to leave that for now because we have to uh, start on the lesson again. I'm going to put uh, a stop at my entry because I probably won't be able to concentrate uh, on doing the lesson and on the price action on the MNQ. So let's go ahead and put a stop for our entry at 17,497. And we're going to cover the entire 17,49. Let's just give it a bit of a buffer there. Uh, and that will be my stop. So hopefully that will get triggered if we make our way up there. All right, let's get back to work. Here we go. Where are my, uh, I have no idea where these keep going. I'll send it to you for a second here while I try to organize myself and my lessons. There we go, good. Now I'm good to go. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. All right. Um, oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. So I think um, I, in terms of like Disney, I did get out of Disney. I have been expelled from the House of Mouse for the time being. If there's really what I should have done here instead of go short was um, dip by. I did not do that. Basically, why I went short here is because I was kind of trying to get this on the back end. As Neil says, I noticed every time we kind of get to this higher high, we would have a little bit of a moment of rejection. In the end, this was the wrong call. I'm happy I got out where I did, I have to say. Um, and I would just kind of want to, you know, kind of acknowledge uh, that we did get out of this move. Um, the sticky note definitely won in this scenario, as it does. <laughs> Go sticky note nation. I, I am, um, you know, I, I'll have left Disney for the time being. You fought against the sticky note, Adara. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I must have, um, unfortunately. <laughs> also, a lot of people mentioning, yeah, there we go. Um, there he is. Sean, Sean has won this debate. Or not this debate, this unintentional me accidentally getting in a fight with a sticky note, which I didn't realize I had done. Um, <laughs> Yeah, go go shot we're on kidding, that. Kidding, obviously. Also, yeah, we're, I'm yeah. just joking. Yeah, I didn't even realize that was a thing. But um, but yeah, let's let's talk about. Um, yeah, I, I can start. Fun. I want to okay, start yeah. uh, the, ha the sure. hammer. All right, guys, hammer candles. We're talking about six bullish uh, candlestick patterns today. They range from one uh, candlestick pattern to three can uh, to three. Uh, Candlestick patterns, okay? So sometimes they have one bar up to three, okay? So the hammer one we're talking about is a single. It is a single candlestick pattern. It is formed by the, basically it's characterized by a short body with a long lower wick and it is typically found at the bottom end of a downtrend. It typically what it shows is that there was a lot of selling pressure uh, during this downtrend, but ultimately buying pressure pushed the price back up. And that's, you know, that's obvious based upon what we can see here just from looking at the candle alone. Forget about what preceded it. Forget about all this over here. We can just tell that that happened by looking at this one candle. Why? Because we know that to get to this bottom wick, there had to be a lot of selling pressure to take us to this new low. But then this new low was met with a lot of demand, a lot of interest from buyers, hence pushing not only the price, the closing print for this candle above the open, which on a green candle, we know the open is the bottom part of the rectangle or, or the, the body, and the closing print is the top portion, okay? And so clearly here, pushing it so far up that it closed above the opening print on the candle. And if we look subsequent to the hammer candle, we can see that it... It is, uh, uh, it is followed by an uptrend, okay? So the hammer shows that there was selling pressure during, uh, during uh, the move down, but ultimately strong buyer pressure drove the price back up. The color of the body can vary, but green hammer candles are a lot stronger than red ones, even though red ones can also be bullish as well. So hammer candles, again, like all the other chart pattern, or sorry, um, candlestick patterns that we're going to talk about today are fractal, meaning they work on multiple time frames, whether the one hour, the 15 minute, what have you. However, the, the lower down the time frame you go, the more the this can actually fail. So the failure rate for these ones increases, okay? The higher the time frame you see it on, like the weekly and the monthly, the more weight that that should carry with you. So that's the hammer candle there. And what we're looking for uh, is it for to be preceded by a downtrend and then to look for this particular uh, bottoming tail candle 
to show that buyers are really overwhelming sellers, followed by some green candles to the high side. So that hope that helps. That is the hammer candle. After that is the inverse hammer candle. And this one is characterized by uh, same thing here. But let me just zoom in on it so you guys can see. Uh, it's not the same thing, obviously. It's a similarly bullish pattern. How the only difference being is the upper wick is long. And by the way, I'm out now of the futures trade. It comes back into my level. And so we wet our beak nicely there for like a 30, uh, 30 more 40 point winner there. But uh, as it ca came down, came back into my entry, that is the end of that. So now we can concentrate on this. So it's a similarly bullish pattern, the only difference being that it has a long upper wick, while the lower wick, if any, is short. This is indicating that there was buying pressure, followed by selling pressure that was not strong enough to drive down a new low and break the lower end of the wick. So again, this is typically preceded by a move down, then there's obviously buying pressure to make a new high above the previous red candle, however, selling pressure took this back down. And the difference between this one and the hammer candle is it show it suggests suggests not shows that buying pressure or buyers may soon be in control. And so the you know the one the the deciding factor is really going to be what the next couple of candles print after this inverse hammer candle over here. Do you get the subsequent candle making a new high? Is it, uh, is it opening beyond the closing print of the inverse hammer candle? So many different things you need to look at, but this one should put you on alert that the trend may be changing, and the trend here that preceded this hammer can the inverse hammer candle was down. So you know, whether you see this particular candle over here or this particular candle over here, you should be on uh, alert for possibly uh, the trend to change. So that's the inverse hammer candle. The next one is the bullish engulfing candle, okay? And this one, we, we often see Michael Moss talk about this one when he does his morning uh, routine on Mondays and Fridays. He's looking for swing, swing trades typically, but when he looks at the daily or the hourly or the four hour, oftentimes he is pointing out these bullish engulfing candles. And these are characterized by analyzing two different candles. The first candle, which is a short red body candle, is in is completely engulfed by the subsequent candle, which is a green larger candle. So what you're looking for here is for the entire price action of this red candle here to be engulfed by the price action of the subsequent green candle here. But the characteristic of this is that the second candle, which is the green candle, will open lower than the first candle. So we know that on red candles, the opening print is the upper uh, part of the body and the closing part of the body is the close, the lower part of the body is the closing print. So we know that that, we know that this candle, this red candle here opened up at this level, while we know the green candle opened up at this level. So it opens up lower than the previous day. However, what characterizes this one is the closing print here, which basically closes much higher than the opening print and engulfs the entire uh, price action of the red day. So just like with everything else we've been talking about, this is typically preceded by a downtrend and that indicates that you know buyers are overwhelming sellers uh, at, in these two particular candles that we have to look for. And then subsequent to the green candle forming, we're looking for a new green candle to form uh, a new high after that. Now there's no specifics as to where it needs to open or close, but it just needs to create a new high and ideally, obviously, the close near the high. So that is the bullish engulfing candle, okay? The piercing line is another interesting one, one that I was not uh, that familiar with, I gotta tell you the truth, uh, one that I've read about in technical analysis books, but not one that I really uh, looked to identify, uh, at least in my daily charting. The piercing line is also a two candlestick pattern. It's made up of a long red candle, as just, uh, shown here, followed by a long green candle. There's a, usually a significant gap down between the first candle's closing price, which we know is this over here, okay? and the green candlesticks opening, which we know is over here. So this is gapping down. We know the closing price is around right here while the opening price for this candle is right here, okay? However, the, the, basically what we're looking for here is that the closing price of the green candle has to be above the midpoint price action of this red candle. So we're looking for this closing print to be above the midpoint, 
okay? The second, the clothes on the second bar must be more than halfway up the body of the first bar, okay? And th this is basically showing the same thing where buyers are starting to overwhelm sellers at this particular level, okay? And so that's what we're seeing here. It doesn't make a new high. Um, it, it makes a lower low, in fact, so kind of looks like a, a bearish candle, except the closing price is what's indicative of here is as compared to the midprint of the previous day. So that is what we call the piercing line. The morning star is the one after that. And this is the one that there was a little bit of uh, disagreement on because it looked like a bit of a doji. But what, ca what differentiates the morning star doji from the others is uh, the other candles that you use to analyze it. So this is another three candlestick pattern. So the morning star candlestick pattern is considered a sign of hope in a bleak market downtrend. As you can see here, it is preceded by a downtrend. It is a three candlestick pattern, one short bodied candle surrounded by one long red candle and one long green candle. That's you, you can see that over here. It is a short body candle. To the left is the long red candle. To the right is the long green candle. Traditionally, the star will not have an overlap with the bodies of the bigger candles as the market gaps both on open and close. Typically what this is signaling is that selling pressure of the first candle, the first red candle over here, is subsiding and a bullish trend may be on the horizon. So after we get this bullish green candle over here, which obviously creates a, a newer high, what we wanna see is what finishes subsequent, what comes subsequent to that. Uh, here, obviously, we have a bit of a candle of indecision, but on the following candle, we definitely have a new high and a higher low. So that is one to keep in mind as well. So this is the morning star candle characterized by two uh, larger candles, one red, one green, and the one on the left uh, has to be, should be red because it should be preceded by a downtrend then showing that you know, the winds of change sort of are uh, coming to a head there. And then last but not least, the most controversial of all the, the candlestick patterns, three white soldiers as they're called. Uh, typically this happens over three days. Again, it is a three candlestick pattern. It consists of a long green candle with small wicks, which open and close progressively higher than the previous day. That's obviously uh, denoted by the opening print over here on this candle the opening print over here, they're all subsequently higher, all making higher highs, higher lows, and higher opening prints. This is a strong, very strong, I should say, bullish signal that occurs after a downtrend. Again, it should be preceded, these three white soldiers should be preceded by a prolonged downtrend, and it basically shows that a steady advance of buying pressure is taking effect and we want to obviously see uh, what happens after these three white shoulder s soldiers. I'm willing to bet that Randy's uh, Christmas tree uh, retracement, not the Christmas tree retracement, maybe the opposite of that, yeah. the V-shaped retracement, probably has a lot of these three white soldiers. I'm that, willing to bet. That's probably true, right? Like, I think it, I think it would probably have to because you kind of need that movement out. Also, I yeah. think I really want to address... Um, Shan uh, underscore NJ in the chat, can you add entry, entry and risk while explaining? I think that's a really interesting point. Like, I guess it would probably depend, I would say, on each chart. Do you know what I mean? Like, each chart's different levels. Yeah. And I would say, and I mean, I don't, I don't want to kind of speak on a turn on this, but I would think no, no, probably ahead. you could look maybe more at candles in addition to whatever you're going to used to enter. Oh, you know what guys, I mean? yes. I, like, I, I would not, I probably wouldn't say this 100%. is like your, your signal deciding, single deciding factor. One thing I said at the very top that I didn't repeat that I should have repeated, guys, this is on the balance of the evidence. We are not looking at one candlestick and saying, hey, this is what I'm basing my trade on. I see a morning star candle. I'm going along 10,000 shares of Tesla. You know, that this is a maker to break it moment. No, it is on the balance of the evidence. What are the other indicators showing? What's the support? What's the resistance? Where are you relative to VWAP? Are you above the closing price or below? What's the trend on the day? What's the sector like? Is it the chips? Are the chips up? Are we EVs? Are the EVs down? So many things you have to consider. When we're showing you this, we're showing you one piece of the puzzle that has to be considered in multiple different, uh, in, in, on the bigger, the bigger picture. Okay, so that's what I, I always want to stress this. It is on the balance of the evidence. You shouldn't put too much into one thing. We're just showing you one of the things that you have to consider here. I really hope that um, 
I'm as clear as I can be about that yeah. because I don't want you to think that this is one trading strategy where you only need to look for a few candles and then you make your decision based on that. No, it is one of the one of the arrows in your quiver. Yeah, I, I think I thank you for putting it like that. And yeah, I think because I thought that was a really good question, so I just yes, wanted absolutely. to kind of yeah. put that out there. And I think too, like how I use candles, and I mean, take this as you will. I'm still very much learning, right? I'm still in the sim, trying to learn a bit every day. But I think it's more like if I have a level I like, and then I see something in the candle that has some confluence with that, then I'll be a little bit emboldened. Oh, you know what I mean? I have to hit that. I'm so sorry. for example, um, me, I guess reloading even a, a, here, reloading this. Uh, I know this is bullish candle day, and I'm talking about a short. But part of why I reloaded here, this five, this five. 599 area for this NVIDIA short, uh, even after we eclipsed that 600 and then failed it, was because I saw that we failed that 600. Look at this this wick, this beautiful uh, wick to the upside. And then all of the, the sellers ate up all the buyers here. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I can look at this. This wouldn't be my sole reason for entering. I was watching this book like a hawk, and I was patient in this trade, especially by my standards, because I'm usually a bit more of an impatient trader. Oh. And I just kind of waited and watched. And so this wasn't going to be the sole reason I entered this trade, but it did help me feel a little bit more emboldened and a little bit more confident in that decision, if that makes sense. I like you know what it. I mean? So using the candles is another confirmatory cat, uh, factor. In addition to the other factors you're going to use, I would say that is how I like to use them. And I do think this whole trick of like looking at what these wicks are doing to the downside or upside in conjunction with the rest of the movement, I think that's been really key to my trading since I learned that. So I really want to kind of uh, put that out there. And I think I really appreciate your question, Shan, uh, underscore, and Jay. I think it's really going to kind of also depend on the context in terms of your point of entry. And I think also your point of entry is going to have to probably also be formed on the balance of the evidence. Bang. Yeah. Um, Adira, I want to talk a little bit about DWAC now because I don't know how the big kahunas feel about this, but uh, I'm seeing a series of lower highs and a flat bottom here possibly materializing on DWAC. Uh, here's the peak at 41 that we were all ooing and aahing about, and then you had another little crest move into 40, which got rejected. But both times, Adira, the bottom has been at that $38 level. Okay, so a couple of touches here at this uh, $38 level with lower highs. I'm not going to go ahead and just jump into this one willy-nilly. I'd rather give up some of the profits uh, on the move down if it breaks down than be first to jump into this bad boy just because, number one, it's a counter trend trade. Let's be real about it. This thing's up 50%. So me getting in short here by default is risky, Okay. Because I'm taking something that's 50, some almost 50% to the good. And I'm saying, I know when this is going to turn around. I'm so smart. I'm going to get this one short. No, I'm not. Okay, so I need to be careful in how I try to weasel my way into this short. Now, this may not materialize. 38 may hold. Maybe it's a double bottom. You're right. Maybe this is uh, going to be the first part, the, the left side of the W, and this will be the right side of the W over here. Who knows? What I'll be on the lookout for is if we can break above 40 and make a new high because that will be no longer a series of lower highs. If we get above this 40, it'll be breaking this crest over here, this pop over here, this two candle pop, and uh, it'll make my trade no longer valid in my eyes, right? Maybe it'll set up later. Here we go again. Look at it. M moving up possibly into 40. Didn't make a new high quite yet, so we still have the lower highs intact. But, you know, imagine I had punched in short. 38 or 38 and a quarter over here. I'd be like a dollar 75 out of the money already on this monster. So I'm trying to I'm trying to see if there is a possible short here on DWAC through 38, but I don't want to be the first to the party. I'd rather be late and uh, take less money and, and be right rather than get rinsed. So anyway, looking interesting here, DWAC. Uh, some of the other names as well. We talked about BFRG as the gift that keeps on giving mm. for the small cap gapper traders. It's been running almost, I think, for, I, I want to say two weeks. Has it been? It's been, it's been over a week now. It's been over a week, right? Yeah. This didn't start last week. It started the week prior. It started right? at the start of last week, I think. The start of last week. I Thank believe. You. And there it goes again, Adair. I mean, it held VWAP quite nicely. It did a bit of a dip trade into VWAP. It held the half dollar. It held the two-thirds of a dollar, and VWAP was just a little bit above the dip there, but look, you now look at it, starting to curl back up here, getting it on the back end, as my friend Neil likes to say, it's through seven. It has a 750 uh, HOD, not exactly 750, 748 to be exact, but we're awfully close here, uh, a lot closer to the high of day than we are the, the low. So awfully strong is BFRG. I, I still feel like, you know, I miss, may have missed my entry into this. Even if you got in a little high, look at these dips into VWAP. 
Uh, these are bottoming tail candles, meaning buyers really overwhelming sellers at this VWAP level over here. So there is a great deal of interest and there continues to be a great deal of interest in this name. It is a multi-day runner to the high side. Let's just look at the daily. Like, look at this thing, man. So this Adara, this started running on the 17th. Let's Whew. see what it's run up, what the percentage. Since the 17th, this thing is up 171%. That's a great move for a small capper, man. In a few days, you run up 171% consistently. And look at this, we're closing near the highs. This is not one of those ones where you get a huge topping tail candle, it does like a $10 move and then closes towards the bottom. This is four days straight of closing near the highs. If we close at this level today, I mean Friday, we definitely close near the highs and the day prior to that and the day prior to that. So if today's to be any uh, similar or is similar to the, any of the previous days last week, we're gonna close above this uh, $7 area. We'll have to wait and see, but good luck here for BFRG. Just not really sure how to weasel my way into this trade. Yeah, it certainly keeps leaping to the upside there, um, Bullfrog. Couple people making some um, A plus puns in the chat as well there you go. with this. So uh, much appreciated as always. Nick Sanders after lunch hop. Yeah, there we go. Um, also, you know what? What I want to talk about is um, oh, spirit because um, all puns aside, I'm going to come up with some puns probably as I go. But also, <laughs> I, like I really, I goes. really want to talk about this um, sort of, I guess interesting kind of flat top break and I think sometimes how patterns don't always manifest how you think they're going to right I think this is something you could also apply to candlestick patterns I think you can also apply to to these patterns as well right this clearly we did have this flat top um at this what I want to say like 755 area and we did sort of have higher lows but just because you know like not everything's going to necessarily be like a quote-unquote pattern do you know what I mean but that being said with spirit Higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. This really nice flat top of that um, 755. So I just think it's an interesting area that I want to kind of put out there um, in terms of that that move to the upside. It doesn't always manifest how you think it's going to. And, um, and I think one thing important I really learned too is you just can't go chasing waterfalls. You can't think you find puns or not puns. Oh my God, I, my mind's on puns. You can't think you find patterns everywhere. Do you know what I mean? The P, the, the, the started, both started with a P and I got <laughs> a little distracted there. I will take the L on that wholeheartedly. But yeah, I think this um, certainly a really interesting look here on save, um, finding it saving grace over here at nice spirited move past that flat top of that 755. So I think that's a really um, interesting look. And I just kind of want to talk about it. This is not necessarily the pattern that you think you're going to get. You're going to wait a while for that flat top break. But when it came, it came pretty nicely. I noticed some mentions of this in the chat. So I did want to bring up this um, this save move here. Also, AMD um, getting mentioned here. So I think, I mean, AMD has been like the name Him? du jour, the name of the year so far even too. Um, we had that, doing? we're making new all-time highs uh, last week, I almost said yesterday, but last week, oh, okay, AMD doing <laughs> something kind of interesting, heading up to VWAP. Uh, so we hit VWAP, we touch it, then we go back down, then we kind of jump around VWAP. I think if this breaks above VWAP decisively, this could be interesting because we are seeing higher lows as well. I, I'm i going to wait a little bit. I want to see a little bit more confirmation here. But I think this could be an interesting look, just kind of taking this above VWAP, taking mm. a little bit of profit uh, right where we had this 168.30 because look, when this comes back into confluence, uh, it comes back almost the same levels right above VWAP here. And then I would probably take the rest of the profit around this 168.70. Should I get involved? or 169.70. I don't know if I'm gonna get involved, but I just, I like the idea of this kind of consolidation getting close to VWAP. I think if this breaks up, I yeah. think it'd be kind of explosive and it's just something I wanna be aware of here. Also Nvidia still doing its thing, 21, around that 598, 599. Um, this level has been so volatile, I really don't wanna get involved. Uh, right now, because I do think we're going to reject 600 again. If we reject 600 again, I might get like a whack-a-mole, like the little hammer thing mallet and smack it back down uh, from <laughs> 600 and take that short again. Yeah, anybody with uh, NVIDIA puts would probably really like for you to do that. I just saw someone yeah. trolling people in the chat there. He's like, how are those NVIDIA puts looking? Yeah, I hope you're. I hope uh, if you're holding NVIDIA puts, you're holding them in the short term and you've got a better strike price than where we're at right now because... Awfully close to 600 we go again, Adara. 598.85 is where we're at right now. Uh, the one that I'm looking at, though, is DWAC, DWAC. Now, above 50%, just finished talking about a 38 bottom over here and how I didn't want to chase this. Well, this one 
put a new high in, okay? So this is the, the previous high off which I was basing the lower high analysis. Well, that's come and gone, right? That was sub 40, now we've printed to 40.50. So, you know, there could be a lot of noise on this. I'm looking on the one minute chart, so noise is included for free with uh, <laughs> this particular look right here. But as you, as you, you know, declutter a little bit and you look at the five, you, you've, you've got to get the feeling that uh, this 38, if it goes, is going to go quite nicely. But, you know, it looks like as if it's going to hold this level, at least for now. So, you know, maybe put an alert for near that 38. But otherwise, I'm not going to get involved in DWAC, whether to the long side or the short side, until it resolves in, in one direction or another. It's just it's too tough for me to get in at this uh, at this level. Um, all right, what else we got? I was just looking at Apple as well, because Apple just made a curl back into VWAP. Adara was just talking about NVIDIA, I'm sorry, AMD curling back into VWAP. I was expecting a 194 touch and maybe still getting a, a 194 touch here on AAPL, which also happens to be where VWAP is, okay? So that whole dollar uh, VWAP level on Apple, um, coming into play. It also happens to be resistance level two uh, on pivots. I'm not really sure how much I'm going to really uh, put stock in pivots today on Apple because just awfully strong. Um, and we did clear a, a resistance level two earlier there when we got into that 195 and a third. But if we get into that 194 VWAP, it's going to be interesting to see whether the shorts, um, the shorts are in play. And that you know, because we've been at below VWAP ever since this big Khwadunk here at 1045. We didn't really have an explanation for why this Khwadunk came into place. But the point is, it was sub VWAP and we've been sub VWAP since that big move down. So 194 VWAP AAPL will be interesting. We're about 10 pennies away from that right now as we continue to trend higher here on Apple at 193.80 ish uh, in that region there. What else is uh, in play at the moment? A lot of sideways price action today, man, like on this MAG7. Oh, yeah. Like, even look at TSLA. We've been talking about this $2 uh, level. You saw the Katina Man print on this one earlier, but, like, I mean, it's still stuck between 209 to the bottom side and 211. And it's been a sideways consolidation. Even Big Cal Burdett was pointing out that Tesla could be looking awfully bare flaggish, but that's a really long flag here. That's forming. This is the five-minute look on Tesla, two-dollar range, but it's putting in lower highs. As I look at this in a bit more detail now, the yellow line is the 20-period EMA, and every single time we've been putting in a lower high. Each crest, if you want to call these crests, um, has been lower than the previous one. So, do we get? This 209 flat bottom break. We've already had prints below 209, but they've been transitory. And I hate to use that word because of <laughs> the connotations with a lot of people in the chat. But 209, I mean, has been broken on a couple of occasions, but not on a closing, uh, closing basis. So Tesla continuing to range sideways here. I mean, I don't feel like I have a trade on anything at the moment. Hard to find. Yeah, stuff. I'm looking. Like I'm looking. I mean, DWAC. DWAC is the one that's continuing to print. Uh, higher lows here. That 38 hold on DWAC. Here it comes again. Maybe 40, 50. I just I don't have a trade on it. Sadly, I wish I give you guys something a bit better, but not right now. Yeah, it's been really hard. I've had the same where it's like there. There's a lot happening that I want to get involved with that I also don't want to force myself into a trade. And I have to be really honest. I think if I got involved in anything that I'm seeing right now, it would be a force, and I don't want to make trades. You know what I mean? Just to kind of to make trades if the setup isn't there. That being said, that. That Disney short um, is still kind of appealing to me. Um, as we kind of uh, wicked below, or I guess not wicked below, we have we have a couple candles below this uh, 60, 94, 70 area. We're kind of curling below. The thing that, that kind of makes me nervous here is these these wild wicks to the downside and then being bought back up. To me, this suggests, you know, we're on candlestick week. This could be that buyers are still overwhelming sellers here. And as I say that, we get another pop to the upside. So I don't, I've don't. i already accidentally questioned the sticky note once on this Disney move. I do not want to, to do this again. I'm going to have to wait and see what we do here. Um, but I'm still open to the idea that that so, of something on Disney. I just need to figure out the direction there. Save, Adara. The chat is yelling save right now. Just pumping up. Got to eight or almost to eight. Seven, nine, seven. Seven. No, that is not an airplane. Uh, <laughs> got into that eight dollar area and rejected Adara. But we have a 660 low on save, up 18 percent 
Uh, this one was really on the uh, on the fritz last week because we were wondering whether this was going to be a going concern after the judge rejected the merger between or the buyout by JetBlue over Safe. Now that is going to be appealed. So JetBlue apparently, as per the deal with Spirit Airlines, they actually have to appeal the court of first instance decision into an appellate court. So we're going to have to wait and see whether that, what that brings and whether they get uh, some sort of injunctory relief uh, in the meantime or whether or not we're going to have to wait this out to the end of the appeal, which is probably going to be at least six months, you figure, right? Probably not earlier than that. But anyway, here comes eight bucks. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on this $8 level. Definitely having trouble with that level at the moment. Shout out to Scott H. for pointing that out. Appreciate that, bro. Uh, Mr. Long Shorts was yelling about SGMT. I told him I personally didn't like SGMT right now. And that's the monster that was running triple digits today, over 100% at its high, 117% right now. But it is not looking, uh, looking good enough for me to get into a long, especially with that 2071 high. We're just barely above VWAP. The only saving grace, Mr. Long Shorts, I like about this is the higher lows that we put in. So that 12, 1210 low that we put in over here, and then this, uh, this, you want to call it trough, stopped out at 13 and a half, and we put in a bit of a higher high through this wick into that 1580 above that 15 and a third that we had gotten to uh, originally. But I'm not liking this one all that much right now on SGMT, so I'm going to pack my patience. Diamond Realty of Miami, he says it's d whacking again. Yes, sir, it is. d -whack is doing DWAC things, new high of day, a new high of day on DWAC, 41.39, we're accumulating at $41. Right now, the spread is still doing DWAC spread huh. type things. Yeah, it's 20 pennies, Adara. I mean, like, you know, it's just you get cut up 20 pennies a share just by getting in and getting out. So yeah. you really need to have a, a plan uh, with DWAC there. That $38 buy was just absolute money. Sadly for me, I was looking the other way on that. I was thinking short through the break of D, uh, through, through the break of 38 on DWAC, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, DWAC, I see it, baby, I see it. Um, Rock Doc telling me the same thing as well. DWAC testing new highs, yes, sir. Keeping an eye on this as well. Um, Gatekeeper says, too good to be true? Question mark. Lock in your profits. Never... A bad idea to do that. You know what my man Neil likes to say, nobody ever went broke taking profits. So wet your beak a little bit here on DWAC as it heads into possibly 42 bucks a Daryl. Yeah, it's been um, it's been DWAC the way this is moving like this last couple of weeks is what a move. Also, um, you know, I'm trying to I know we talked a little bit last week about my maybe um, range trading perhaps tendencies. And I have to say, like, I I Look at Tesla. Every time we hit this 209, we saying, swoop back up yeah. to 210, and then we go back down to 209. So basically, I'm trying to, I think I might have missed the opportunity on this. Do you but think if we'll we get a flat bottom break, we very much could. We very much could, and that's what kind of makes me tempted about, or um, that makes me a little hesitant, I guess, about trying to get in the long here. I just want to kind of take whatever pennies I can get, but it looks like I'm not even going to get filled. So that might not be uh, my problem to worry about. I also did try to short this earlier at that 210, but I should have waited to get it on the back end. Shout out to Neil for that, because look, I, I was just a couple candles um, too early to this move. But in the end, I think I'm just going to get out of this um, Tesla buy because I'm not going to get this move. And you're right. I think if we do go back down, I could get swept up in that flat bottom break <laughs> and it comes flat bottom breaking with me in the cyber truck. So I just don't <laughs> want to get involved in that right now. I also, um, someone was mentioning, oh yeah, in a pickle mentioning AMC dip buy. And I have not looked at AMP, our, our pal AMP, oh. shout out to Sharif, in quite some time. Oh yeah. So let me look. Okay. I think I see what you mean here. Uh, we're very much, uh, we're actually not that much down in the day. It just looks like we're down on the day. We're only down about... Oh. Uh, 0.10%, but I have to, or 0.1%, but I have to say this, this bottom at, I can't believe I'm saying this, 446, that's what AMC's at right now, what a fall, but this 446 double bottom is pretty enticing, I, I really do appreciate the look on this in a pickle, I'm going to have to wait to see um, areas here, but I do like also this potential former resistance of 449 becoming support here at 449, every time I say a number that AMC's at, I get really sad, because we were talking about this one, it was at like $10, and now we're here, and this is like, quite a moment for AMC. That was after the split, right? This is, yeah. This is post-split, too. Can you imagine what it would be pre-split? Oh, like, God. being the pennies right now.
Yeah, yeah it, it's quite it's quite the look here on on um, AMC. But I think yeah, I, I appreciate you for bringing this one up. Um, yep. Uh, in a pickle, I, I like the idea of this trade. I just want to wait and see a little bit more. Maybe one more trust to that 446. Uh, this one is is so the val. I I mean I'm I I've been trading a lot of these of these mega caps. So I'll probably have to you know readjust my mindset to trading something that is as um, teeny tiny as AMC. But I do not dislike the look. I've been trying to trade more small caps and different stuff. So I'm going to keep my eye on this. And thank you for bringing this one to my attention. Uh, but, oh, well, that wasn't me, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. take credit on your behalf. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Guys, Apple is back into VWAP here at 194. Okay, so that closing, sorry, the, the whole dollar 194 level is jiving with VWAP, which is at 194.02. It also happens to be, you know, obviously less important resistance level two on the pivots as evidenced by this navy blue dotted horizontal line on my chart. Um, we've been below this level. All the wicks into 194 have been rejected since giving up the ghost at around 1045. This big chwadun down from 195 and a third. We got all the way down to at the low there, 193, held 193. We've been stair-stepping back up ever so slowly. Now we are knocking the door about two pennies from 194 at the moment. So I don't know what to make of this move. I got to tell you the truth, whether or not we're going to reject off this level or we're going to reclaim it or what the hell is going to go on. Uh, but, you know, as Greg, the former floor manager on the this floor used to say, I'm not going to anticipate I'm going to participate, and we're going to let this one decide what it wants to do before we jump in. But just want to point that out. 194 VWAP pivot on Apple and whole dollar, obviously, uh, as we get uh, get that move up there. Uh, also, the other one I want to mention, NVDA back again. Back, back, back again. At that one, at that 599 and a third, inching closer to a possible 600 level again. I mean, since basically the uh, the opening print when we broke above 603, got to 603.31, it has been a $600 uh, top resistance on NVIDIA. The wicks and the moves into 600 all have been faded. We had a nice one on, uh, on this. Uh, we had a nice trade on this bad boy earlier on. But since that time, we haven't re, uh, reignited that trade and have just been kind of watching from the sidelines as this one does its dance with that 599 the third 600 level. Let's pull up uh, NV. Oh, my goodness. There goes DWAC again. New high day on DWAC, guys. Uh, to report again. <laughs> yeah, this one. $41.65. So 41 and two-thirds. And here we go again. $42 incoming. $41.93 now. The high of the day. Here we go, says the Katina man. And I'm looking at the, the book over here. There is some size at 42, albeit not huge. I would say probably not enough to kind of uh, prevent the ascent that we're getting right now on DWAC. But we don't know what kind of hidden sellers are sitting at 42. But here we go. This one absolutely pumping to the high side. If you got long on any of these dips uh, earlier on, v uh, on DWAC, good for you. You're better than me because I couldn't get myself to punch into this name. I just felt it was a little too spready, too volatile. Couldn't do it. But there we go. Now it just uh, bounced off that 41.95. Fantastic move today for DWAC. Um, yeah, I'm looking at these markets. I want to talk possibly about the future here uh, below 17.5, but it's not really doing much, guys. I mean, we had a nice trade here on the future, but since that time, it's all below 17.5, and it's been doing the weakness. But it's not really like tanking off 17.5. It's kind of consolidating below 17.5. Right. So, uh, you know, the parabolic movement to the high side or the low side, I feel is not there yet on uh, the futures or on these market or on these makes of a name, I should say. Excuse me. Uh, so a bit of a tougher, uh, tougher trading day, at least for myself. Um, let's see. DWAC will fade into obscurity uh, again. Relax. I'm not. I'm not upset. I think. It, I think it's probably someone else. Uh, yeah. I was just like. I'm just. You know. Reporting. We're just reacting it, to what's right? happening. Right? It's my yeah. job. Uh, guys, save is pumping. Okay, so save is going here, guys. Twenty-two percent go save. We were talking about it being sub eight. There goes eight dollars on SAVE. Eight dollars and fourteen cents. Shout out to the Katina man. Save 
headed north. Yes, I see you, Scott H. He says, save, breaks, eight, bro. Squeeze imminent. Let's go. Yes, absolutely. Save is up to the high side there, guys, as it, um, you know, tries. No, I'm not going to do it. I was going to say save itself, but that's that's right up your alley there. I can't do I mean, that to you, Other Dara. people can take puns as well. <laughs> nuh -uh. Uh -uh. I enjoy it. Yeah, look, look, there can only be like a one Punisher on this desk, and I think that that's you. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> the professor and the Punisher, I guess. That, that's yeah, there you go. Okay. That's how it's going to go. I'm good with that. Yeah, no, I also um, I appreciate you um, <laughs> letting... Uh, giving the pun mantle to me there. Also, Apple, I got involved at this 194. I'm a little bit hesitant. Uh, basically, why I got involved here was I like this kind of curl to the upside. We're approaching VWAP. I'm getting out if we make a lower low, so that break below that um, 193.75-esque would be an out for me. Also happens to be where my 9 EMA is, so that would be of note as well. It's like every time we... I feel like I, I should have gotten in a little bit lower on this. I should have waited for a, a proper dip instead of just getting in below that at that 194 because it was kind of right below VWAP here. Um, but again, and you know, I think too, like I, I not like, like I said, I don't really love the entry on this. I do still like the concept of this trade though. I kind of want to see what we do. Um, should we eclipse VWAP? I, we're going to kind of have to wait in this because I do think with this kind of upward kind of bull curled up movement, and the confluence with it breaking view up, I think this could be a powerful move. Profit takers, I want to get out some around this uh, 194.30 because that was where we had a lot of chop and turn earlier. And then the rest around that uh, 194.50 because that was where we had that little pause before that movement to the upside. Let's look at um, AMD because a couple of people mentioning AMD, including Mina Amadi here. What's going on with AMD? AMD got a downgrade from Northland Capital today from uh, market or from outperform to market perform. Uh, so that's certainly of note. I think right now what we're seeing is a little bit of compression. Actually, no, I'm going to move where I put that. I don't like that. There we go. Give me a moment. So, yeah, so what I'm basically seeing is I'm going to move this little dude as well. There we go. Um, so basically what we're seeing is these kind of high, lower highs, higher lows. Also, uh, much like Apple, kind of doing it as we're getting close to VWAP, which you think is of note. We're down on the day, so generally from what, I, what I've what i been aware of with compressive compression wedges story, they usually uh, break in whatever direction the stock is on the day. Because we're down on the day, this could break lower. But I think because you know we keep uh, bumping against VWAP, I think if we do break to the high side, this could be significant. But as I speak, we're kind of breaking below that compression wedge. Looks like a bit of a move to the downside, so I'm going to be pretty cognizant of that. Also, it looks like Apple is... Um, kind of falling just to scotch, so I should probably check on that to make sure this apple has not gotten poisoned while I've been in the trade. Um, okay, yeah, so we're still, we're still, we haven't made a new low yet. I'm just gonna be conscious of that. I think I might have uh, really shot myself in the foot here with this trade, entered a little bit too early. I should have uh, gotten in on a dip and waited to kind of see, uh, but as long as we kind of keep this, yeah, as I, as I speak, we're kind of breaking lower here. I think I probably might need to cut this one a little bit loose, uh, but yeah, I think, Apple, much like AMD, having a really hard time getting over VWAP today, although AMD did have the negative catalyst with that Northland Capital downgrade, so that does make it a bit more, I think, potent to the downside than Apple, and I really dislike the use of that word there, but here we are. Um, Dream saying futures breaking down as well. Yeah, I think there's a lot, a lot going down here uh, with the market. Yeah, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, yeah, I just loaded that bad boy up. I came back. I was thinking maybe a 17.5 touch, not, not to be. We're doing uh, the wick dance. I mean, and by that I mean the rejection of that 100 point level from the south side. So we're not bouncing off 17.5 from the top side. No, we're rejecting off. 17.5 from the downside, and that you know just kind of gives you an indication of where we may, might be headed the rest of the afternoon. Technically, the low on the day is 17.438. That is yes, not yes, the overnight's closing print, I believe. Let's have a look over here. Here's the NQ. Let me show you the other NQ though, where it shows the pre-market action. So this is, uh, you can see this dotted line. I don't, I don't think you guys can see the dotted line. No, you can't. So let me put in the horizontal trend line. This is technically the low on the, I mean, the closing print. And look look where the low on the day is. So we definitely held the closing print um, to the T on that big descent down. But we could get another attempt at it here as we come down right back into local lows at 17.460. Uh, bouncing off that level right now. The, the move into VWAP over here was rejected. 
Um, and this is where I initially got into my short trade on the, on the, the MNQ. But uh, it was, I don't want to say it was short-lived, but it came right back into my entry. And that was probably a bad decision by me to, uh, to exit it there. I should have probably given it to the high over here. But here we go. Here we go. We're breaking down. Now we're in the 50s. We're, we're in the mid 50s. We're about to break down possibly into the low 50s. So the, uh, the local low over here just got broken. Now we're looking at the day's low. This double bottom over here at 17,440. That's where we're, we're now looking as we broke through this particular level. But some buying coming in for now. Let's see what kind of continuity we get on this move down. But the future... Uh, looking a little bit weaker. And then some people were asking, how come the ES looks a little bit better than the NQ? And I don't know if it looks better, but it's definitely up a little bit more. 0.22 uh, in the green for the ES while we're down 0.15. Uh, sorry, we're only we're up 0.15, pardon me, on the NQ. So the ES outperforming a little bit. I'm assuming that probably has something to do with the chips and how the chips are a little bit weaker on the day. Um, and here's the thing, though. It's like we're not super weak on the chips. I mean... Intel's red, AMD's red, Taiwan Semi's red, and ARM is red. Okay, but Broadcom is up, NVIDIA is up, ASML, AMAC, Qualcomm, SMCI, even SMH, the ETF, they're all up. They're all green. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, I would say, for chips. You have the, the, the obvious red one, which is AMD, over 4%. Probably something to do with the fact that it ran up like umpteen percent last week and giving up a little bit right now. But I, would, but I wouldn't say that the chips are, as a group, red on the day. But I think that maybe, you know, there's some weakness coming in there. And, yeah, Tesla's probably bringing down the NQ as well. Uh, Amazon's also down. Softy's down. Meta's down. Just because Apple, uh, Apple and NVIDIA and Google are up, you know, you kind of get the, the, the false idea that we're strong on, on the futures. Anyway, let's see what else is moving over here. Um, with respect to, oh my God, DWAC. Oh Still? my God, DWAC. Yeah, DWAC is just one of those ones you just have to punch in, Adara. Look at it. Look at it, man. There goes DWAC. Here comes 44. Unreal. Unreal. I have nothing to say about this. It's up 65%. 66%. This thing's going to go triple digits today, guys. That is in. The orange man is two stepping right now. Yeah, I mean, I also have to shout out to M. Allen. Anyone, can I get a $10 holla for DWAC in at 32? LOL, this is crazy. Congratulations to you, M. Allen. That is a fabulous look. Also, um, so I did get out of Apple, but it looks like I could just took a bite too soon because now we're, we're popping back up. I should have probably gotten involved in this um, around where I got out, which was that uh, 193.75. Nice. Um, if we make another higher high, I might get involved in this in another dip. I just think I, I took a bite too early um, and it just did not end up working out here. Also, um, nice skin in the chat. I like that name. Asking about um, arm for a swing. So I'll look at a wider oh. time frame here. Again, no... You know, not advice, just I'll, I'll give you my take on the chart. I think what's interesting is, you know, first thing I see here is look at the 78. We, this was kind of a double top here, right? We hit that 78.5. We swoop back down uh, to this 60, almost 67, uh, 66 and two-thirds almost. Then we get to that 73. We come back down, make a slightly higher low at the 68. And then we come back to this 60, uh, sorry, 78.5. And then now we're kind of rejecting again. So what I would kind of probably be interested in is seeing, can we have this decisive break above the 78? Um, and like decisive, you know, another candle above the 78. Because now we, we kind of did have this candle to the downside, but I think a green candle up from 78 would be significant. Otherwise, we could be kind of heading to the downside. Um, I also think, you know, I, I think that would be kind of my look on arm. Definitely stronger, especially compared to arm. some of these other um, arm, <laughs> some of these sleepier IPOs, cough, cough, Instacart, cough, cough, Clavio. But I think um, arm is a, is a nice look here. Um, and also what I like, too, is we kind of had this, this move up second day, the 67. Look where we've rejected off of since. The whole idea of um, resistance becoming support. So I think that's kind of an interesting look here on arm. I like, I like this take on that. Also, Nima Amadi saying, is the market choppy today? Is it better to stay cash? I'm losing all of my gains from this morning. I find this market to be kind of choppy. I do, too. That's why I've been kind of trying to not be involved. Yeah. Like, I just think every move I make has been of questionable uh, quality. And, I mean, I know I'm a super new trader, so probably part of that is just 
um, learning, but I, I think, think your also observation the, is fair, though. I think this market's yeah. been kind of a lot. Also, the Disney short seems like it might be coming back in, so I might be might be short enough to ride here on this Disney short. Um, to the downside, uh, we'll have to see if, the, if this comes to fruition. But I do like, we had all this kind of chop and churn, uh, and then this swoop to the downside. Mm -hmm. I'd probably be interested in taking this. Like I said, my levels for this Disney short, 94.3 and then 94. I am of interest. Yeah, Bears versus Bulls, get it. You must be this tall. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at there. <laughs> so I appreciate you uh, clarifying <laughs> that in um, the chat here. Yeah, we're going to have to see if I can uh, get in Disney World there. All right, I just want to update people on a couple of things. The Katina man is liking that 208 level on Tesla. He is long at the 208-ish level, um, which has been that $2 range that we've been talking about between 209 and 211. Um, I just I went over to the Katina man and I was asking him about Apple. I'm like, what do you think about this 194 break on AAPL as we're doing the dance here uh, with VWAP, with the whole dollar level on Apple? And we've been getting pops through 194. We have get anything decisively and the only reason I'm really liking Apple here while we're near lows on the NQ is because Apple is kind of marching to the beat of its own drum today on the news I'm assuming we're really popping on the news here that there were there was more demand for the Vision Pro than anticipated we we're talking about a hundred and sixty thousand unit pre-order for a thirty five hundred dollar device well dang right yeah I mean that's just probably Ooh. all margins that thing uh, to be honest with you, it's so expensive. $4,700 plus HST in this country. You're going to, what is that? Like, what real is, glasses what? are so expensive. And I need to HST get my real glasses. HST in this country, I guys, get. sales tax in this province is 13%. 13% on top of that uh, 4700 is going to be or whatever it's going to be. So it's super expensive. So to, to have 160000 these pre-orders only in the United States, which is where they're selling it, it looks good. So that's the only reason I'm really looking, thinking Apple here long through 194, but there definitely is resistance at the whole dollar level, which also happens to be VWAP here on AAPL. So I don't want to jump the gun too quickly on this one and, uh, and get rinsed, but it's putting in a series of higher lows and higher highs, but still, you know, kind of at a crossroads here. We'll have to wait and see what, what we get. Harry Lou, Sharif, does the VIX have any effect on your futures trading system. I'm surprised it's still at 15, given the volatility on the SMIC and DWAC. Well, the VIX doesn't, it's not gonna be affected by DWAC. That's the thing, right? Um, look, I keep the VIX uh, up on the side chart, but I gotta tell you the truth. The VIX, the majority of my uh, charting on the VIX is not going to be intraday. It is on a closing basis, on a daily closing basis. I'll look at it from the daily chart. I won't look at it intraday at all. That's just not the way I do it. I know other, people's use, other people use it. I use the tick, in, uh, tick index for the NYSE and the NASDAQ to kind of give me uh, an idea with respect to my entries and what the overall market sentiment is at any one given time during the day. Uh, the tick, we talked about this during... Um, I believe, I'm not sure which week, I think it was the indicator week, tick um, for NYSE and NASDAQ. It basically takes a cumulative total of all the stocks and sees which ones are advancing, which ones are declining, and it gives you a net. So if there's a net a decliners, it gives you a negative number. If there are net advancers, it gives you a positive number. And that's what I use for timing entries um, on the, Ma the MAG7 names. I don't use VIX, but thank you for pointing that out. VIX, super important. Anyway, Apple above 194 now, but for how long? We are putting in higher lows. So I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to wet my beak on... Say that again? Oh, Randy's talking donut. Did you know that Randy's going to... He got... He made some lentil soup today. And after the show, I'm going to get to taste some of his lentil soup. And I'm all about that lentil life, too, because lentil... Lentils has good carbohydrates and good proteins, too, so... You know, that Ram Ram's laughing at That sound. <laughs> Say that again. The Katina Man's Affirm Trade is now $3 in the money. So uh, the Katina Man will be talking about that. But for now, we're going to be dropping the cash for him there. Three smackaroos in the money on AFRM Adair. Um, do you want to restart the lesson? Yeah, I was just going to say, I can restart this lesson. I'm still hanging out in the house of mouse, hanging out at this. Um, we're, we're like four paper cents out of the money because this is still in the sim. We're just going to kind of let this uh, hopefully run to the downside. Yeah. Mm. I, 
We're gonna, we're gonna let Mickey Mouse figure out what he wants, but for now we're gonna get into this lesson. So um, let me just get this set up on the screen here. In a momento, por favor, there we go. So um, yeah, we're just gonna like kind of, um, same kind of idea, just refer to these, um, there we go, uh, these little uh, diagrams on occasion as we go through the lesson. So we're talking about six bullish candlestick patterns. This first one up on the screen there right now, I thank you very much, Ramin, is the hammer candle. And so basically this uh, pattern is formed of, you have a short body uh, with a long lower wick, what we have right here in this uh, very helpfully drawn circle. And it's found at the bottom of a downward trend. So you have moved to the downside, then you have another candle, and it's a little bit stronger if this candle is green, but this candle can be any color. And the candle does have a long lower wick, so basically it shows, as Sharif puts it, which I think is a really good way of putting it that I always appreciate, it's sellers overwhelming or buyers overwhelming sellers. So we had this move to the downside, but the buyers ate it right back up like yes, Pat uh, and that, this kind of results in the candle we have here. If this is a, a green candle, like we said, it is kind of sometimes a stronger move to the upside, um, but it can be either color. And so I think that's just kind of the note on hammer candles here. Now we have the inverse hammer, which is an interesting one for me because I always have kind of seen it as I always like to look for these moves where we do have that, the, the like the, at the bottom of the downward trend, you do have the, the hammer candle. So the inverse hammer candle is kind of a new one for me to learn that I think has been really cool. Basically, same kind of idea. Oh, hi. I'm on I the like screen. that, yeah. Same kind of idea as the hammer and candle. And on her own uh, there, Where right? we have, um, yeah, shout out to Ramin for killing it on her own, by the way. I just want to side note on that um, because, yeah, I'm just chilling on the screen. It's fun. But, yeah, so basically. <laughs> what? Sorry. I'm just chilling on the screen. <laughs> I was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> it was neat. I, I liked it. it. <laughs> but no, basically, um, uh, yeah, so inverted hammer, okay. same idea as a hammer, but instead of the candle being, uh, the wick being at the bottom, it's actually at the top. And so it indicates that you have buying pressure, then you had selling pressure, but it just wasn't strong enough to drive the market price down. So uh, kind of, yeah, kind of the opposite movement. And this is honestly a candle that I found a little difficult to learn. I used to think that this was actually an example of uh, this is gonna be a further move to the downside because we had these sellers overwhelming buyers, but that's actually not what it is. It just shows, especially if it's green, this is another a strong sign. It's stronger if we do have the green candle than the red candle, because it does show we did have some sellers, but you know, we still we still won out on the session, whatever, uh, and I say session because this could be any time frame. Could be a five minute, could be a one minute, could be a daily, whatever session it is. We did have some selling pressure, but the buyer still sees the day there. Um, shout out to the Newsies, I guess, for me saying that. But yeah, I think this is kind of an interesting, a really interesting candle and one that I found kind of difficult. So I really appreciate that it's on this list because it's one that I'm still kind of trying to learn. Bullish in golfing. This is a, a really interesting one here as well. Uh, this one formed of two candlesticks. The first is a short red body. This is a uh, first little candle here. Short red body completely engulfed by a larger green candle. And so uh, the second candle will open lower than the first one. So it'll be a bit of a, a gap down here, but then the bullish market will push the price up and then it culminates in an obvious, obvious win for buyers. Basically, smaller candle engulfed buy a bigger green candle. Now the opposite would obviously be bearish and golfing, but we're talking about bullish candles right now. So we're gonna focus on that. I think that's um, a really cool look. And I think one of the clearer ones, I think, like I said, I found the inverse hammer a little bit difficult to understand, but I think the bullish a little bit clearer. And again, none of these candles are gonna be 100%. You do wanna look at them in conjunction with what the overall trend of the stock is or the asset, whatever you're trading. But I think the bullish and golfing is one of the clearest ones, at least for me. Piercing line this is kind of a cool one. And like I said to Sharif earlier, one that I, I find kind of of a little bit more difficult, a little bit more like these chart patterns where you kind of have to measure it out with your little, your measuring tape here. So this one, a two stick pattern, you've got a long red candle and then a long green candle. And there's usually gonna be a gap down between the first candlestick closing price and the first candlestick's opening. So this, this red candle opened to close and this green one we opened below, but then we close at least halfway up from where this red candle closed. This is also significant when you think about, we have to gap down for this candle. So the fact that we're closing uh, more than halfway th uh, up to the upside of this red candle shows a, a giant move in buying pressure, especially if we're coming off a of selling, uh, or I guess if we're coming off of this move to the downside, I think if this buyer's overwhelming seller should be really strong because you're gapping down and then you still have to close halfway above this red candle, right? So I think this one's really significant, kind of a cool one, one that I didn't know as much about and I do think would require a little bit more measurement uh, with like some of these patterns where you have to measure kind of the, the breakout point, right? And where your yep. profit takers are gonna be. So I think that's definitely of note here. 
Uh, la I was going to say last but not least, but we have two more. For one, the Morning Star. So this one also, I was doing notes this morning, and I discovered there's also something called the Morning Doji Star, which is when you have a little bit more of a doji candle for this middle candle, and that one's a little bit less significant than the Morning Star. So I just thought that was kind of an interesting, interesting fact there. So this one's considered a sign of hope when you have um, a bit of a bleak market movement, three stick pattern. So the first one is a short bodied candle. Uh, yes, yeah, so you give this long candle, long red candle, Third candle is this long green candle, and the middle one is gonna be a short uh, bodied candle. It's gonna usually have no overlap with the longer bodies because the market's gonna gap on the open and close, which is significant, not one I knew. And if it's a doji, it's gonna basically open and close in the same place. And like I said, that's apparently its own different pattern, but this one's pretty close to a doji anyway, right? Little tiny, teeny tiny uh, short bodied candle there. And basically what this signals is that selling pressure of the first candle is subsiding, and you do have a little bit more bullish pressure on its way. It's like a morning star. It's a sign of hope in the market um, coming on the horizon. So I think that's a cool look there. Uh, then the three white soldiers or three green soldiers, if you will. Um, and we will. Yeah, no no problem, Neil, no problem. Um, maybe they're like three green football players. I don't know. They're, they're, three, they're three green oh, dudes man. here. And with this one, um, we have three long green or white candles, but in this case, green soldiers, uh, with usually with pretty small wicks, and they're gonna open and close slightly higher than each day, so it's kind of a stutter step to the upside, um, three candles in a row. So I think that's significant. It shows that we have some bullish pressure on the horizon moving up and shows a steady advance of buying after a long stream of selling, right? So it's kind of, we have the selling, and now the buyers are flooding in, the three green soldiers, flooding into the upside. Although I do understand why you put three white soldiers because you can't really Google three green soldiers. No, that's they're, not really what they're what the called. I didn't make it up. Yeah. I don't care. No, I, I just wanted to explain why I'm calling it that and yeah, also like yeah, shout yeah. out to Sharif. Yeah. yeah. There um, we go. Yeah, well, I wanted to mention there that the opening print for the three white soldiers, each opening print, the candle is higher than the previous one. That's sort of the characteristic yeah. of that one. There are other characteristics that, as you can tell, it's making higher highs and higher lows as well. But the one that you really need to keep your eye out on that one is, number one, it was preceded by a downtrend. Number two, the uh, the uh, closing prints, or sorry, the opening prints are all above the previous opening prints there as well. So just want to point that out now. Let's talk about this Apple trade that we've been involved in here that we're uh, 10 pennies out of the money on, right? And so this one, we've been kind of doing that dance with 194, with VWAP. We've been wicking up there, wicking down. Now we're getting some selling where there was, there was a lot of moves through 194. Now the futures are coming down. We're very close to low a day here on the future. Uh, we were about, we're say like eight or nine points away, 17,450 is where we're at now, 17,438 is where the low of day is. Last time we were at the low of day on the future, which happened to be previous day's closing print. Here's the look on the NQ, we did get a bounce. So look, looks like right now, maybe we're putting in a bit of a hammer candle right now, but it's really early on. It's a five minute candle, so don't put too much stock into it. That's number one. Number two, it hasn't closed yet, but the point is to let you know that last time we were around here, we did bounce. Whether or not we bounced this time, an entirely different story. Why is this important for my Apple trade? Well, you know, the, the futures have a way of uh, moving Apple or Apple has a way of moving the futures. Is it the tail or the dog, right? The whole wagging thing. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what we get. I'm not gonna punch out of Apple here. Uh, the out for me on Apple is the making of a new low and the making of a new low comes vis-a-vis -vis the break of this trough over here. So we're gonna have to break uh, 60, uh, no, sorry, 193.70 for me to get out of this AAPL trade. We'll have to wait and see what we get. Up one and a quarter percent right now on the day. We uh, was up a lot higher earlier on. The thing about this one is what's keeping me optimistic about this Apple trade is the series of higher highs and higher lows. And by higher highs, I wanna say, you know, very, very minute higher highs. It's really a flat top at 194 is really what we're getting here. The, the important part are these higher lows, hence why I'm placing a lot of stock in holding this 193.70 area. If we break down below 193.70, I'm cutting the trade, I don't care. Okay, so that's the end of that one. Let's go back and have a look at DW Dang AC. 
It's up 72% now, Big Kahunas, uh, 46.49. So 46.5 is DWAC. Did we look at the short on, uh, on DWAC? Let's bring in trusty trade ideas uh, scanner here. Let's find out what DWAC, the short float is on this bad boy. Seven and a third percent. It's nothing. I mean, I don't want to say it's nothing, but it's not what you would expect. Uh, num well, maybe I guess because kind of uh, it's ran its course here. Uh, it's, this is, we've been doing this thing for two years on DWAC now. So anyway, it's a little bit below 46 bucks right now. It's just not my kind of trade. I, a lot of FOMO on this, let me tell you, but it's not going to punch in on this anyway. All right, let's see what we got here on AAPL. Do we get? Um, I've got a beak wetter sitting at 13s, um, and for for me, 13 is not an unlucky number because my mom is born on the 13th. So, anytime I, uh, anytime anybody tells me 13 is an unlucky number, like my mama's born on the 13th, right? So let's see if we get a print. We're sitting here with a, a beak wetter at 13s, and then we'll talk uh, possibly about a quarter. Um, a quarter dollar print here at 194 and a quarter dollar. We're awfully close. I'm seeing 13s come in on the ass. There we go. Now we got the fill on AAPL as it goes through that 194.13. Could we start stair stepping up and possibly looking near high of days? I mean, it'd be quite an ambitious um, move for Apple to touch high of days and the NQ to remain near low of days because that's where the NQ is right now. It's awfully close to low of days. Uh, than it is high of days. So I think, you know, Apple really moving without the NQ is kind of, I don't know, I don't want to call it wishful thinking, but I just don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's in the cards for this one to move without the NQ. So I'm, I'm a little, I'm, un, I'm nervous about my Apple position because the NQs are coming right back down to 17,450. Yes. Right? And I mean, that's just kind of how I feel about that. What's the chat up to? I haven't looked at too much about what the chat's been saying today. Roland Joe, Sharif. Do you personally look at the chart candle patterns more or the level two for futures? So I don't look at level two at all for futures. And I had a conversation with Steph several times with respect to level two on the futures. And I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I don't think she uses it either. And that's because tip, you got one exchange. You got the CME and that's it on the future. It's not really uh, you know, a level two type thing. It's more of an institutional thing where they're hedging their bets and and placing, uh, you know, larger institutional trades on, you know, for whatever they're hedging, whether an, an equity trade, an options trade, or whatever. So I don't use level two for futures trading. Now you could say, well, you know, you could use it on the queues and the spy and stuff like that. That has multiple gateways. Look, I don't use level two on futures, and that's it. I just use, uh, use my levels, specifically price action levels. I like. Closing prints, I like 100-point levels, and sometimes, you know, you get the, the odd 50-point. That's important. Nima, Adara, Sharif, AMD is looking very strong. It's not going down with NQ. Well, the, the AMD, the AMD, I'm sounding like Obi here, was awfully weak today. It was uh, giving back a lot of the profits that it made last week. It was down four some odd percent. Now it's about three and a half percent in the red. So kind of bouncing a little bit here. Yeah, a little bit of a bounce here. Um, I think a VWAP break would be interesting. I think this one's kind of uh, reminiscent of Apple in that I think it needs like a strong uh, break to the upside. And even then, Apple broke VWAP and then we kind of fell back down, right? I think AMD could do the same. I do think, I noticed this one earlier was a little bit compression-y looking. And at first I thought we were going to break to the downside in order that pattern. Now I think we could be breaking to the upside. As I was saying, generally my understanding with compression patterns is they usually break in whatever uh, direction we're trending. So we are down on the day. Could trend down. Right now it looks like we're kind of seeing a bit of a battle between buyers and sellers here. Uh, that happens to occur around VWAP, which, you know, as Obi was saying, um, sometimes these VWAP, those can be like, you know, magnets for these stocks, right? They can have these Megs at different levels, which we thought was a really good point here. I appreciate him saying that. So I think that's a really interesting um, point to put out there. And I think, I think yeah, AMD bringing above you up would be interesting. Also, congrats to you on your Apple trade. Oh, well, um, it's like barely good. But. Yeah, no, I, because I, I, you know, I got involved yeah. in this like way too early. I got involved in the 194 and then we made a newer low and I got out. Mm. But 
But I think I really like where you got it. And I think like waiting for that VWAP break was like smart as well. Do you know what I mean? If there's another dip opportunity, I might get back in on this because I still think I still think it looks like there's more bites at the apple. I gotta you know tell you, I mean? I'm nervous on, about this trade, and I don't mean to dissuade you. I'm just telling you why I'm nervous. Well, I appreciate your like take on it too, yeah. right? Because you're in it. So. And the thing about this one is, even though I got the print. We're we're at low a day right now on the future. So I like I was just saying it's wishful thinking that Apple's gonna run to a high a day or near high a day or continue to at least trend up when we're down a near low a day on the future. And as I said, wishful thinking, the Neil sent me a, a text like listening to King of Wishful Thinking now, an 80s joint. Shout out to my man Neil. This will be going on the uh, the queue. Because uh, you know how you can add oh, songs I love to your queue. queue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this will be going on the queue. Uh, an 80s joint called King of Wishful Thinking. I did not, I've never heard of this. Who sings it, Neil? Go, go West? No way. Man, I love my 80s music. Let me tell you, bro. I can get into this whole thing. All right. Uh, Apple is coming into that level where we're going to get out of this bad boy. The break of 70s, where we said we're going to get out because that is the making of a newer low. We're basing it off this trough. So it looks like we're going to lose on this Apple trade after taking one beak wetter as it comes down, Adara, into 70s as we've now made a new low of day. On the futures, 17,435. We're bouncing off that level right now, but a new low of day nonetheless. The futures barely green. And by futures, I'm talking about the NQ barely green, 0.02%, 0 0.1%, whatever. 0.1% right now as we bounce off uh, the previous day's closing price. A bamboozling day, to say the least. For these Meg Seven names, I, I personally, you know, if I sat down, you asked me what I thought uh, the day was going to be. I thought the day was going to be positive, especially the way we were moving in the pre-market. And even last night, I turned on my computer last night to do some charting, and the futures were decidedly green. Uh, and that was on a Sunday night. We were doing volume too for the for Sunday night trading on the futures. So uh, I'm a little surprised, but. We'll have to wait and see whether we uh, hold these levels, Adara, as we've got about half an hour left on the show. Yeah, I mean, the market has been doing so much. I do want to shout out Paul, uh, I think it was Paul D in the chat here saying Tesla getting cheaper. And that is a way of putting it. That Tesla move to the downside has been, um, once we broke that 209, we were not looking back. You did call that flat bottom break there on Tesla. It came, uh, eh? Yeah, nice oh, little wow. center step to the downside. Now we're below 208. So we're gonna have to kind of see what we do here. I'm not really seeing an opportunity on this one. I, like I said, I, I was trying to try to kind of trying to trade this range between 210 and 209. Timing was just not there. It was just not meant to be. I sound like very dramatic here, but that was just the look on mm -hmm. Tesla right now. Um, today its name was Dressla. That's how it ended up shaking out. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to address that. Also, Elon here with a question. Hi, oh, Dara and Sharif. Hi, Elon. What contributes to the spready bid ask for DWOC despite its huge trading volume? I don't really know the answer to that, but I think it's an interesting That's question. That's a really good question. Um, okay, well, let's see how much DWAC has done in volume today. Let's find out. DWAC's volume on the day, 16.7 million shares. It's not like a, a too, too much. Um, it's going to be hard to, really for me to, to explain uh, why the spread is what it is. I mean, given you know the above average volume it's just what we have to accept so let's just play the spread that's given us and you know we got it we got to deal with it as it comes yeah. to there thank you yeah no i just thought that was interesting because i thought it was a good question and not something i knew the answer to also i think i'm just gonna have to stay out of the house of mouse for now because i really thought there was gonna be trade on this i did i should not have gone against the sticky note that was very much my mistake i like this short here once i i saw this failure at that 94 70 like decisively and then I guess Disney decided, actually, no, I've changed my mind. We're going to keep going higher. Uh, getting out of this, I basically got top wick, but like in the kind of way you don't want, because usually top wick, it's like, oh, you're like, you know, going up for a short from there. No, I got out of my short at top wick. So this was a bit of a, a sad day for uh, my trade in Disney. But, you know, I'm trying to learn from this. I don't know why this is something I, I kept trying to 
to really get involved in here. But if this stays rangy, like this coming up from 94.5 and getting to about 94.65, if I take it with a decent amount of shares, I might trade up and down this range. I just need to see a little bit more proof of this range before I decide to get involved here. Because I do want to, you know, I'm trying to find some trades that are coming to fruition in some way because it's been hard. It's been quite the, mm -hmm. quite the day to trade, I have to say. It's been a good day for learning, I'll put it that way, and just trying to take... Um, advantage of opportunities in ways that make sense, right? So getting out of this Disney short at top wick did not make sense. Um, but we're going to learn from that. We're going to grow from that. And I just think I am not, I, I'm, I'm not in the place to ride the to ride the Space Mountain right now on Disney. So we're going to leave, <laughs> we're going to leave that. Also that ride is crazy, the Space Mountain. Um, also Nvidia, speaking of um, stocks here, Nvidia, I'm, if I'm being really honest here, that was my only um, successful trade today. And I think I want to kind of try to apply what I applied to NVIDIA to some of my other trading. But I just think today, for whatever reason, this has been the main one to come to fruition. I, you know, this seeing a level of key level here, so that 599 at the time, getting involved again once we fail 600 decisively and then just taking it short here. If, I, like, there's been enough of a range here. I think that the only thing stopping me right now is fear. Oh, wow. From just taking that 599, 598. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Please SGMT's do. going, guys. Here we go again, SGMT. This one was the big small cap gapper du jour, and it kind of gave up the ghost all day, sub VWAP. Here we go. It just pumped up big through that $16 flat top that it had. Then it popped up into 16 and three quarters, and now we're rocketing up into 18, 18 plus, we were at, uh, what was the high there? 18 and three quarters, we're coming back into 18, up 163%. Be careful with this one. Not only is it spready, but it is also a, a smaller float. It's not micro. It's 20 million share float. I don't know what the uh, short is on it. Let me look, SGMT. Um, I don't see a short float uh, from Trade Idea, so we'll have to fly blind. In, uh, in that direction, but I just want to let you know, this one is moving, it's moving aggressively. Just got off the schneid there, as my friend Neil likes to say, this one was a little bit dormant the, major the majority of the afternoon after making obviously that $20 pop, got into 2071. Here we go again, uh, breaking through VWA, breaking through that $16 flat top that it had been putting in uh, the uh, majority of the morning, getting into that $18 area, but a dangerous one, nonetheless. So you have to you have to make sure that you've got a plan and you're sizing in accordingly to this one. Now it's kind of been like DWAC has been taking uh, the cake at times, and then SGMT has taken the cake at some other times. So now DWAC retracing down into 41 and two thirds off that 46 and a half top that it had earlier and then SGMT has been rolling in as the one that's popping now above $18 so keep your eyes uh, on that all right back to AAPL as we come back into 194 on Apple um, I did get an opportunity to get um, a better cost basis when it dipped into 193.80 so now we have 93s Sorry, 91s, 193.91 as our cost basis, not 194.03. So we'll have to see whether or not we can finally take that 194 on a closing basis and not just wick in uh, into 194 and then reject. Because, again, we keep talking about how we're near the lows on the future. It's kind of, I don't want to say it's not practical, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not the best thing to, to want Apple to, to run near high days and then have the futures near low days. So, uh, in the money on this one, but albeit barely, uh, keeping an eye on some of the other small cap cappers, SGMT and D Wackadare. Yeah, there's um, so many small cap cappers. Like when I was doing the small cap cappers this morning and small cap recap, I was like, there's so many. Like the small oh, yeah. cap recaps could have been their own happening now. There were so many of these guys running today. So Joby many. was up a little bit earlier today as well. Let's look at Joby. our favorite um, flying. Evie Tall. Yeah, Evie Tall. There we go. What? Um, it is an NY name. There we go. You don't typically think of these companies as tip NY names. That's why I didn't. Yeah, yeah like right? Because yeah. it's like, you. what do you think of Joby? You think of like, That's it's like a tech name, right? Yeah. But no, I like, you know, I want to look at this level here because I, you know, okay. even small caps can sometimes respect levels. This 588 has been kind of interesting. We got here had a little bit of consolidation, bounced off, landed right back at that 588, hung out for a little bit, swoop below, guess mm. where we hung out again, 588. Uh, really interesting level for whatever reason, and look, now we're coming back to that pre-market chop and turn here around 572. Did not see any news for Joby. Um, 
here today. Oh, okay, yeah, I, no, Benzinga is just saying it's, yeah, it just traded higher. So that's what we're at today. Still up on the day, um, not really running right now, volume just below five mil, but it's just one I wanted to bring up because I did mention it running earlier. Also, um, I did get in and out of this little NVIDIA short. Like I said, I'm just trying to, trying to wet my beak in back into the beak wetting. Oh, you found a story. Thank you so much. No problem. I always want to help. Appreciate uh, it. So just sorry to interrupt you, Adair. I just wanted Please to do. give the idea, the the reason for Joby running here. Uh, Zach's um, reporting that Joby has announced a collaboration with Atlantic Aviation to electrify its existing aviation infrastructure in New York and SoCal as part of its efforts to launch a revolutionary air taxi service. So it looks like uh, Atlantic Aviation and Joby uh, teaming up there to uh, provide some electrification for for air travel, Adair. Yeah, no, That's and thank, thank you for bringing that one up because I didn't see that on Benzinga because sometimes different news outlets sure. will have different stories. So thank you very much for bringing that one up. Because um, I, I was also, I was trying to find it this morning too. That like I was like, Gobi, why is yeah. Gobi running? Yeah, yeah. or uh, flying? Mm -hmm. I guess it's flying, but. Um, it's electrified, I guess, with yeah. that, that deal uh, with Atlantic Would Aviation. Would you get in one of those EV tolls? I'd be. Tell the truth. Wait, so those are like the flying cabs, right? They're like basically like the drones that take people on them. Okay, I, I mean, to be fair, I've been in some Ubers with some weird drivers, so I'm like, I don't even know if I trust like the drivers all the time. I think I'd want to see a test run, um, and I would want to make sure they had some nice insurance. Okay. And if so... Uh, then I'd be interested. It looks like Ramin is interested. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Ram Ram. I, yes, Ram Ram. I would, in a heartbeat. Yeah. In a heartbeat, I okay. would be in that plane. And if I go, I go. That's all right, you know. Yeah, that's, we're all that, on that, a lift that, That's a cool story, though, yeah. too. Like, oh, like, how did, oh, yeah, on, on a Joby. I died on an EV yeah. tall. Yeah, yeah. No, let, let me, I love these type of, uh, you know, personal airplanes like yeah. you call them you pick you go from one place to another and you don't have to deal with any traffic anybody coughing on you on the subway all that good stuff that That's we have true. to interact with and then, you know as a as a self-proclaimed introvert i thought you'd be all about that life See, like flying through the air without anyone okay to, that actually you know that part I, mean? I do like yeah i might have to change my answer i do love though where it means <laughs> answers let me fly it i'll test fly it where do i sign up <laughs> where do i sign up you go right i love man. i love the enthusiasm i actually do kind of agree um to some extent when you when you explain the whole like introvert thing and you don't have to be around other people then i'm like well i could just write in the car mm -mm. and no one's bothering me no one's like, stepping on your shoes in the subway oh my or, god no know? one's like yelling weird things like i'm actually down also speaking of down i mm -hmm. did get involved in this teeny tiny nvidia short here um basically i like i said i was trying to kind of get back into the 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 hang of just like trading because i had been a little bit nervous after some of those um questionable disney attempts but i saw you know that nvidia range had been really strong so i just shorted 599 i want to take it to 598.50 because i thought you know we could take 598 as well but True. i know nvidia gets a little dicey around 598 so i was like let's just practice getting out where i'm a little bit more comfortable it ended up working out um basically my plan to leave was had we decisively broken above that 599.50 uh so that would be like 50 about like one-to-one -one risk to reward then that's when i was going to um exit this short stage left but it ended up going okay pretty happy with it just kind of trying to to find these levels and getting involved now one thing that does make me nervous though for this range is it looks like we're seeing slightly higher lows so i think maybe we could be actually having a, a 600 test again i'm gonna stay out of the yeah. short for the time being but i don't really know if i want to go long either because i think nvidia and 600 are just not best friends right now a little bit of a frenemies relationship they kind of keep getting into cat fights so i want to wait for a couple <laughs> more tests of that like i'm telling you when i was in that short nvidia hit 600 i was terrified and then i look around uh, turn around for a second, it's back below 599. Ah. So I think just NVIDIA at 600 seems to be behaving in a very peculiar way. And I think I really appreciate you bringing this up earlier to me today as an example of levels hitting uh, pre-market and being much less significant, yeah. especially when it's a key level like that. So I think that's an interesting look. Also, and I actually thought about that last night because when yeah. I turned on my platform to do a little charting, now my platform allows after hours trading. Right. Okay. So it'll start quoting you what the stock is. Typically, you just get it grayed out because equities don't trade after market or yeah. on Sunday nights anyway. Now I can, um, and I saw it over 600. That's the first thing that I thought. The lesson from last week, about 500 on NVIDIA coming after 930, not coming before 930. And that was the exact opposite. We got 600 before 930. And look at that. We're doing the dance with no pants south of 600. Yeah. Right? So, you know, it... it I really did like the fact that that actually held out. But yeah, I think your 600 on NVIDIA is very similar for whatever reason to this 194 here on Apple because we really cannot 
stay above 194 for whatever reason. Yeah, I got a couple of beak wetters here at random levels, but you, look at look at the uh, the chart on it. It's really having trouble on any closing basis, staying above that 194 area for whatever reason. Uh, even though we've been accumulating with higher lows in anticipation of a 194 take, kind of a random level uh, to to have uh, an issue with here on Apple on the day, but. That's what we're presented with, with 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 the moment. So I've got a beak wetter. There we go. We get the fill at tens. Now can we get something along the lines of a quarter touch? Because we haven't been up uh, anything above, you know, like uh, the mid teens. Let me just tell you real quick what the local high is. It's 14. 194.14 is the local high. Anything before that, you're going to have to go back to 1045. We haven't been above 194.14 since 1045. And you know it's you know, it's giving me it's giving me shades of 600 on Nvidia right now. This 194 level on Apple, and it's straddling this uh, VWAP. It yeah, it's it's like a VWAP whole dollar level on Apple. Anyway, up 1.3 percent. Uh, tougher trade here. Yeah, it's a really stressful time. Also, Nima Hamadi asking a question. Um, I appreciate this here. Tell us about taking us. Uh, tell us about your worst day in the market. How did you recover from it? Oh, Thanks. Wow. Um, I feel like I'm I, as I'm still learning. I'm still having a couple a couple worst days every every few weeks, right? right? And I think a lot of people struggle with that. I remember. One day I had, um, you know, a nice successful Eli Lilly short. That was that day that I came up with that news that um, the uh, Zet bound wasn't as successful. Like it wasn't going to have a lot of long-term success. So I took that right. short. It went really well. Then I tried to short it again and it ended up going against me with huge volume to the upside. That was, a, you know, that was even even being in paper trade, I still take it really seriously, right? So that yeah. was a really stressful Good. short. But I guess um, getting over it was just, you, you know, you have to find other trades and you have to like not get down on yourself. Because I think my thing is it's really easy for me to see a setup I do like after and not trust it because oh I right. messed up on that setup right it's not it's not the case you have to take each trade as an individual event yeah as Obi says you know there's always going to be other trades the, what's it the next trade that there that I knew it worded mm -hmm. it wrong thank you what's the next trade and so I think that's what I had to do in that situation have a plan exit when the plan fails and then just kind of move on you have to kind of as, as you were saying Alfred says be dead inside you and I you be. know I think I like that to an extent I think too you have to like be be proud of yourself and be happy when things work out, but don't dwell on that. Do you know what I mean? Like, hey, this trade worked out. Let's see what, what the next opportunity is Absolutely. so we can keep doing this, right? And if something's not working, you know, just admit it's not working. And I think, too, like, for myself, if a trade goes badly, too, I think sometimes it's just okay to admit, like, hey, this didn't work out, but something else will, right? Like those yeah. Disney, those Disney trades. What was I doing? It, it's okay. I will leave the theme park and go on to the next <laughs> trade. Yeah, so I think I really appreciated that question. I wanted to address that. Yeah, I, I don't remember what my worst day was, um, but I just remember feelings that I get. And like uh, my worst day probably was when I was trading back at home before I came onto the floor here. Uh, and I was a viewer of the show at that time because I remember all sorts of things flying around my apartment, uh, you know, slippers and shoes being thrown at mirrors and you know just a lot of emotional manifestation of a new trader the person who really kind of you know when you lose money you tend to react if you're a newer trader anyway I think you react more emotionally than if you lose money and you're an experienced trader um, I don't remember the exact day or what the setup was or anything like that I really don't uh, but I just remember having, you know, multiple bad days back when, uh, you know, 2020, 2021, when I first started trading and just being, you know, reacting emotionally, not reacting rationally. And that was kind of the, the, the part that kind of added insult to injuries because I, I remember, I don't remember specifically what it was, but I remember probably adding into the loser and really getting rinsed, like adding to a loser, constantly DCAing. And then really coming at the, the other end of the trade just wiped. Again, I don't remember what it was, though, but it was some bad days, baby. Trust me. Um, all right. Sharif, would you throw your cake? Absolutely not. That cake that I had this weekend? Wow. So, okay, I, I need more context on the cake. From, from where did it appear? Was okay. it baked for you? Did so, you bake it? It was, um, somebody brought it to my parents okay. uh, when we had Christmas. So it had been stuck in my freezer because I got a whole bunch of leftovers uh, when I left. So I put it in the freezer and I completely forgot about it, my deep freezer. And I completely forgot about it. Then I was trying to scavenge for some food, right, for some sweets. Right? I got a, a bit of a sweet craving over the weekend. Then it, I remembered it. 
I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have one piece. You know, we're just going to have one piece. It's not a big deal. It's a weekend. You know, I'm bulking, this, that, and the other. Sunday afternoon was done in there. I mean, it was, how it was you big, it? man. It was big cake. It was a 4,000 <laughs> plus calorie cake that I've consumed on my own like a psychotic person. But uh, it's gone now. Anyway, I'm happy so. you enjoyed it, right? Like, what matters <laughs> is you enjoyed the cake. I had a good time this weekend, I tell you that. There you but go. Um, yeah, I also did a really good work. I did a double sesh yesterday. My legs are killing, by the way. Uh, Adara, we are moving up on Apple. We did break that 14, that 194.14 local high. We did get into the 17s. I've got a beak wetter there at 19. So if we can continue to move up through 194 on Apple, I will get the print. Otherwise, I don't think we've cleared it with any vigor yet to really... Uh, you know, really start thinking, okay, we're kind of out of the woods a little bit from our entry. Uh, we are long at 90, so we're about uh, 30 pennies in the money on this bad boy. And there goes the fill on AAPL. Let's see now if we can start stair-stepping up. Let's see, number one, uh, if we can get into that half dollar level. And then after the half dollar level, we'll start talking about that 195 level. But the Fuch, uh, I think, would ha is going to have to cooperate. And so far it is. So we're off the schneid there at that 17.434. We're in the 17.470s. So let's see if we can continue to run here on the Fuch and on Apple. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a hard roll. Oh, I got to tell you. I mean, it's just there's no, there's no velocity in the ascent here on any of these names. I got to tell you the it's truth. Hard. Even, yeah, even you're getting 600 again on NVIDIA. So whoever is doing that trade, whether a long or short trade, uh, we're at back at 600 on the NVIDIA. Say that again, Katina man. Tesla, that Katina man is still doing the dance with Tesla. He's long, he's, he's up on it again. As it moves into 209, Katina man, shout out to you, my man. Got great trade. Uh, and he does the dance there with TSLA. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what we get on the futures, but it's it's been tough it's, for me anyway. It's it's a tough trading day. Um, M. Allen, beautiful day today. My first super chat. Thanks to all here. Shutting it down for the day. If I take any more trades, I will be in a sim. Shout out to you. Not giving it back, M. Allen. Pleased as punch for you, as Adair likes to say. Trust me, we do get actually quite pumped when uh, viewers in the chat print because we're not here for ourselves. Yeah, no, and I mean, like, like I, it's hard. You know, we can't look at like every single, um, every single stock. Unfortunately, we try to look at what we can. And I think with that, you know, I really appreciate your super chat there, um, and thank you always uh, for being here because we like, you know, when everybody's here in the party, I'm getting excited about all of the stocks. With us, sometimes yelling um, pump it, other times yelling dump it. We are all in this together. Uh, shout out to High School Musical 3. Also, um, I want to bring out, speaking of stocks we haven't really, like, I haven't really looked Ooh, at, Rumble? was Rum. Mm. Yeah, Rumble. Um, yeah, this one getting a little bit uh, tipsy, uh, moving to the downside over here towards VWAP. I think that VWAP break could be interesting. <laughs> we did have this wick below it, but we didn't close below it. I think this will be um, kind of fascinating. I think it was Nimit earlier mentioning Nimit. this one being interesting, heading up to the uh, CEO of Rumble speaking on the, um, I forget, it's someone's podcast. I'm going to get the exact wording of this. Uh, make sure I know there. It's someone... Uh, there's someone's podcast he's supposed to be going Ram, on. Ram, calm down. We're not going on today. Podcast. But um, there, yeah, so I think they'll. <laughs> we do have a podcast. Please listen to our podcast. Um, yeah, PBD Pod. Thank you. B Bot 5000 saying PBD Pod. Thank you so much. I knew it was somebody, Bet Davis. Patrick Bet Davis. That's who it is. That's whose podcast it is. Thank you. I just couldn't think of his name. All right. But yes, also um, the podcast. I was watching the podcast this morning while doing my makeup because that yep. was my makeup podcast this morning. And it's you, always very informative. Yeah. But yeah, I think Rumble, interesting. Kind of, the, oh, <laughs> kind of doing a bit of a double top <laughs> here at this 485 um, and then kind of creating down towards VWAP. I think this. You know, we did have made some lower lows here. I think that could be an interesting look. Um, yeah, no worries, Nimit. Sorry, I didn't get to cover it earlier. But, yeah, I think this is the look on Rumble. Okay. I think these lower highs kind of make me a little bit nervous. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what the CEO reveals. Because he said that that um, Barstool Sports thing is only just the beginning of what oh. they're going to reveal today on the PBD podcast. Uh, thank you, BeBot5000. Have you ever watched 5, any of these 
uh, Barstool po uh, podcast okay, so with my, Portnoy and like the other dude? Yeah, that's kind of embarrassing. So my my friend watches one of them. I mm. think it's like the I think it's called Besties with like him and the two people that are younger than me. Oh yeah. And it's like Josh Richards is one of them, and he's like some TikTok CEO, but he was like an influencer first. Okay. And then the other one is this girl who I think like just works for um, Barstool, oh. but she's also like I think maybe slightly older than me. So they're like young, you know, him Whatever. and the, just these yeah. young people talking about um, like influencer drama. It's really uh, it's really weird. I is it funny? Say, it's. I mean, I just think it's funny that <laughs> like Dave, Portnoy, made, like, Dave Portnoy is getting involved in like all this influencer drama. It's kind of yeah, strange yeah, for yeah. me. Well, but he I mean, is kind of an I guess he is. He's enjoying himself. Um, yeah. It is kind of entertaining. I have to say, he's entertaining. He but, is. Yeah. I, I like his like pizza review thing that he did there I during the seen pandemic. Those, no. Yeah, he would go around to like all the different pizza places. He had a rule. He'd take one bite of the slice and he'd give it a rating out of ten or whatever. Um, that was kind of his thing during the pandemic. He did it to boost. Uh, the local restaurant sales, which were hurting. Guys, That's cool. we're pumping here on Apple, and we've taken a couple of beak wetters so far, more than a couple. We've taken five beak wetters, and now we've got the, the sixth beak wetter here in the mid-40s as we pump up through 194. So we were complaining the majority of the afternoon that that 194 VWAP level on AAPL was a bit of a hurdle that we really couldn't get through. Looks like we've cleared it with some vigor now, which was the issue. So let's see if we can get that pop into the half dollar. I am looking to de-risk quite a bit here in the mid 40s, Adara, as we do have significant size I'm seeing here on the book at the half dollar. And I don't want to be a part of that with the size that I'm holding in case we do reject, um, hence why I'm sitting at 44s. Uh, to de-risk a little bit, but um, if we start running here in the afternoon to the high side, Apple looks like it's leading the charge, uh, I want to say, in terms of strength. Now, it was a bit of a duel between NVIDIA and Apple and who was up more on the day. It is now Apple that is winning that battle up 1.5%. NVIDIA is up 0.82. Next on the list, I would say, is going to have to be uh, Netflix, even though that's not part of the Mag 7, we can just include it for current purposes, up 1%. And it's also an interesting name because we are awfully close to 500 on Netflix. So that trade could be coming in quite soon. The issue with Netflix has always been its liquidity. It does far less in terms of volume than the other Mag 7 names. By comparison, today Apple's done so far 37.5 million shares um, and Netflix has done 3.2. So... You can just make your uh, distinction there real quick. Eric says Tesla about to take off. And I got to tell you, the Katina man is going to be happy about that because he's been doing that Tesla along the majority of the afternoon. He's not here at the moment, but I'm sure when he comes back, he'll be happy. The Hayes Records, shout out to you, the Hayes Records, one of the OGs in the chat. Thank you very much for the 199 Super Chat. He says prop account or friends and fam LP trading 2025 plans. Um, I don't know what friends and fam LP trading is. Do, do you know? Anybody know what that is? I know what prop account is. I don't know what you mean, um, uh, the Hayes record. So maybe just explain a little bit because I, I don't get it. Uh, Zion Lala says, Sharif, Adam, Adara, any thoughts on Netflix earnings tomorrow? That is going to be super interesting, but we did get a little bit of a kind of a, a head, uh, not a headwind, but we did get, you know, an indication from them. Remember when they released uh, the non-advertising accounts? That's true. The, yeah. Sorry, the ad account, the, the, the ad tiered account. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And how they grew ridiculous amounts uh, higher than what analysts were expecting. Yeah. They make more money on those accounts too. Don't forget, right? Yeah, no, I think, I think that will be interesting. Like, cool? Remember, like, I know the yeah. Disney versus Netflix ad revenue, Netflix swoop it above. Yeah. So I think that could be an interesting look. Mm -hmm. I think... <laughs> I think also um, with Netflix, you have to keep in mind, this one moved 16% after the last earnings, and that is a $400 plus dollar stock. Whoa. So I think this is going to be super significant. Yeah. I think no matter what the earnings, what the actual numbers are, I think how the stock moves will be of significance, something I'm going to keep an eye on. Speaking of these streaming names, shout out to Mark Susie for reminding me of Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, this one breaking above 95. We had this beautiful move to the upside. Thank God I decided to stop shorting this name. Thank gosh, indeed. Yeah, I think this is a really nice look here on Disney. Congrats to people who did follow the sticky note. Um, I was not one of them. Unfortunately, I didn't. I wasn't trying to go against the sticky note. I just didn't realize. 
But yeah, this um, this short was yeah, not no fighting here. Um, I just think this short was uh, really ill-advised. But congrats to anyone in this Disney long, um, tall enough to ride, and succeeding in this beautiful <laughs> move to the upside here tall on Disney. To ride. Let's look at let's look at Netflix here. It's like here. Space Mountain or something. Right? Oh my God, Space Mountain is crazy. Also, um, yeah, Netflix also kind of doing an interesting little bit of a. A sort of a breakout here. Also, uh, NVIDIA is just knocking on the door 600 again. It We're going to get it's to that It's been in a knocking. It's been, yeah, it's been knocking for like a while. Yeah. They've not been answering. But yeah, NVIDIA, or sorry, Netflix, let me zoom out a little bit more. Trying to make these higher highs here. A bit of a move up to the upside. Oh. What's going on? Katina I'm getting smacked Tesla? in the face. Yeah, people, people were already like, yo, Tesla's curling. I'm like, the Katina man is not here, but when he comes back, he's going to be pumped. And so, well, we got the, we got the verdict there when the Katina man came back. Yep. So. Uh, congrats, congrats to Sean on that. Um, also, yeah, NVIDIA, again, coming for, like I said, I think what, what kind of made me scared off after I took that last short here, because um, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to, like, look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, as Neil said, I was like, let's take this short and then let's, like, run away. Um, so I think, because we, we keep getting to this, we had, like, this kind of curve move to the upside, right, like, these higher lows. I think... The fact that we keep getting close to 600, I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to hit 600 again because, look, we were, like, in 600. We got to almost 601, and then we flew right back down, right? So NVIDIA is not a huge fan of 600. I think we're going to have to wait and see what it yeah. does here. But I think either way, watching it try to get to this level has been immensely entertaining. Yes, it um, has been. And it's been, it's been cool to just kind of short this and try to trade this along the way. And, I, you know, pretty, pretty happy to practice DCAing into this earlier. And I, I find it more interesting because of our... Um, lesson on Friday and how we were talking about breakouts and how we were talking about spotting failed breakouts. And one of the things that Darren and I talked about was when it breaks a key resistance level outside of regular market hours, okay? And that's, that was a telltale sign. If you look at the 500 break that we got last Monday or the Monday prior to that, I forget, it was a 9.30 after the 9.30 bell break. But this morning, we opened up the pre above 600. So I just intuition, call it intuition, whatever, based on, or maybe because the refresher from Friday's lesson. But I was on the hunt for uh, an NVIDIA 600 rejection. And so far, you know, I'm not saying we rejected with any vigor where the low of the day is only $10 lower, 590.70. But, uh, you know, that does have something to do with the lesson we were talking about. Uh, one minute left, Adara, before I send it back to you. AAPL at the half dollar. We've got a beak wetter on the other side of the half dollar at 194.55. But Apple, the strongest of the Mag 7 names on the day. I'm seeing Softy pop up too, but still not nearly as strong as AAPL. Looking for a possible move back into 195. We got beak wetters at the half dollar. Let's see what we get here. Dare send it to you. To yeah, congratulations to you for taking a, a bite out of that trade. Like I said, I tried to get into Apple, got a little spooked and left. And I think, yeah, like congratulations to you. That's a great look. And I think the D DCAing into it also ended up being um, fantastic there. Still looking at NVIDIA, keeps trying to get to that 600. I think the fact that we literally hit 600 and then fell back down to me is a sign. I think 600 and NVIDIA are going to take a little bit while for us to get to that level. And I do appreciate you bringing um, this back to the lesson we had last week because, you know, yeah. we're here at How to Trade slash the midday. We're going to keep going back to lessons because lessons are going to keep presenting themselves because the market yeah. will teach you a little bit each day. But for now, our market lessons have come to a close. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Same bad time. Same bad channel. For now, Brendan is at the big desk. Hey, guys. Yeah, 2 o'clock. Welcome back in as we uh, head into the final couple hours here. I was just looking at the uh, U.S. dollar moving back to the upside uh, in afternoon trade.